This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. How's it going, everybody? Hey, thanks, Charisma. Yeah, we're way behind uh, this month now after a couple crappy nights, but who knows, man? Who knows? Maybe tonight will be fantastic. I doubt it. Hey, thanks, Claudia Newbauer. Yep, uh, if you guys like to help out, support the channel tonight, it'd be great. We had some really slow activity the last couple days. Uh, not sure what was going on there, but hopefully getting back to some true crime. Got some crazy uh, you know, Delphi madness and, and sadness, I guess. Uh, really crazy stuff. But thank you, Claudia Newbauer, and Bucolic Buffalo, and Bridget Bauman. Wow, that right there, you guys, matched the entire last night for two hours. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, and you too, Kathy Chapin. Hey, we just blew away yesterday. It was like one of the worst. I don't know what the hell was going on, but it just is what it is. All right. So anyways... Um, the uh, Delphi, you know, all, you know, so I'm just going to speak in generalities here, but uh, you know how there's been all of these um, leaks? I think it's sort of actually kind of seemed like it started back, every, all the leaks started after Richard Allen was arrested. So you had leaks of crime scene photos that had pictures of the clothing in the water. And then I think later on we had the one with the F on the tree and then eventually the crime scene, two crime scene photos got released of Abby and Libby but they haven't made it around to the general public, anything like that. And the 136 page document that uh, the defense put out, the, the, you know, the gibberish garbage, garbage, you know, people like uh, YouTuber with the name of Snay, he believes in all that. Er, anything that's other than Richard Allen. Richard Allen is Jesus to that guy. He is the most unguilty person on the freaking planet. <laughs> the guy, the, that guy is a lunatic, you guys. He's one of the people that believes wholeheartedly that Ron Logan is the guy 
on the bridge. He doesn't look anything like him. Oh, well, once you see it, you can't unsee it, everybody. Well, it's not him. Um, Richard Allen's the guy that said he was there wearing the exact same clothing, you lunatic. That guy... I, I think there's some weird cabal of YouTubers that all kind of... I mean, normally you would say that and you'd sound sort of like a conspiracy person, but in this case, it's not. There's these uh, podcasters and a few different YouTubers that are just up the defense's ass on a daily basis. They love them. I'm not sure if it's sexual in nature, but it is very strange. Uh, very odd stuff going on there. All right. I mean, what did he say today? He said that um, um, uh, <laughs> that I have to believe the defense, I mean, the prosecution's theory. And it's like, yeah, I, I do. I, I believe the prosecution has it right. Is there something weird about that or, or what? You know? but anyways, there's all these leaks out there. And... Um, so there became a time where law enforcement was needing to figure out like where in the hell this these leaks were coming from. And the leak, the uh, uh, you know various names were developed out there where the leaks were came from. And it's really strange uh, turn of events. Uh, you know, at some level in the leaking, there was an individual. I won't say the name. I know the name and everything, but um, you know, so the leaking was just recently found out, and then literally two days after that, the one of the people's names in the leaking chain uh, committed suicide, which is absolutely crazy, right? Like you look at that and you say, "Well, why would you do that?" I mean, leaking is just leaking; it's not. You know, but what if the leaking led to an issue with the original leaker? For example, if they were like a, an attorney or something and they get disbarred and you, you know, feel like you take the blame for sort of ruining something. But I mean, would you really though? Because you're not the one that leaked it anyway. So what do you guys think of that? Isn't that wild that, that somebody... Uh, regarding the leaking killed themselves. Are you guys even on, even still here? Did I lose connection? It's like nobody's even... Hello? <whistles> Anybody out there? Hello? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. It's like nobody was even listening, like a bunch of idiots. I mean, come on. You know, pay attention. And you know what's strange is right now you got 191 people watching. Where is everybody, man? Is everybody just still, like, every second of every day watching something else? No, it's not probably not related. Uh, it's very likely related. NASA in the woods. You sound dense by even commenting that way. Uh, it's very likely related. Because it was one of the main people. And, uh, yes... You have no idea what you're talking about. That it could be not related. Sure, I said that, but uh, very likely is. Right. Let's see. Now, what I what I said was. There's been a tons and tons of leaks in the Delphi case. In the last week or so, an attempt has been made to discover where the leaking came from. That, inf that led to the discovery of uh, just like a three or four names in a chain. And one of those people, once the shit hit the fan, um, basically took their life, right? And next week, there's going to be some you know, big stuff coming out. And I think it's, uh, you know, going to be related to the leaking, all right? So pretty, uh, pretty crazy if you think about it. 
I don't care how it's pronounced. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, hold on a second. Yeah. Let's see. Hey, thanks, CR. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was um, Wednesday, actually. Or no, it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah I, I said that. Hello. Might have been the day before. Like, you know, things are, everything runs together now. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. No, two days ago. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much weird stuff going on. You know, I mean, all the stuff lately is that if you were here, you'd know that the jeans that um, Abby was wearing was actually were actually Libby's jeans. We always thought that Libby had sweatpants on, but it turns out the reality and truth is she had jeans on and Abby was wearing them, and then that would necessarily mean that the um, Converse basketball shoes or whatever the hell they were that Abby were was wearing were obviously taken off at one point because she has those skinny jeans on and you can't get those over the basketball shoes so you, you would have had to pull the, those pants off then the now it's also possible without even you know we don't know but, could, but she could still even have her jeans on and they're underneath um, Libby's jeans and there then it wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to then take off all the other stuff but let's just say they're not and her jeans were found elsewhere then that would mean that the her shoes would have had to been taken off then the pants would have had to been taken off and then later Libby's pants would have had to been put on and then the, the shoes put on later which is a kind of an odd scenario right so we got that then we also, I mean, people whose brains don't work well always go, so there's three of Libby's shoes because... Instead of just going, you know what, some of the stuff we've heard over the years isn't 100% exactly what we were thinking. For example, the Nike shoe that Kelsey uh, heard somebody say, hey, we found a shoe. Well, that person was likely near the stream on the bridge side and somebody else relayed from across the creek, hey, we see the shoe. And there's a shoe in the water. And then the other Nike shoe was found underneath Abby's uh, body, underneath a, uh, yeah, underneath Abby's body, like underneath her left leg. And then the phone was underneath that. You know, it makes you wonder, now that we know that they're jeans, jeans have pockets, you know. So maybe the phone was in a pocket and it sort of fell out at some point. Don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about, knack in the woods. Nobody knows what the hell you're saying. Okay, anyways, have a good one. I gotta get rid of you. Thanks. All right, uh, let's see. Take care, wherever, else, wherever you find out there, all right? I just had enough. Every show, you always have some kind of a snarky bullshit comment, and so that won't be happening anymore. Yes, I always thought the first shoe was on land between Bridge and Creek. Yep, exactly. That's what I've always thought. And that Libby was wearing some sort of um, sweatpants. Right? Hey, thank you, Georgina Stolikir. <laughs> uh, actually, I'll just put you back in. Who cares? You can stay in here. It's just I, I don't need your comments back. You you comment, come in and say it was unrelated without knowing a damn thing about it, knack in the woods or whatever the hell you call yourself. All right, so, um, you know, that's why I criticize it. You just immediately blurt out, oh, it's probably not related. Well, you don't have an, any idea, all right? 
Uh, yes, we always thought Libby was wearing gray sweatpants. Mm -hmm. That's what we always thought, yes. His wife got into a heated argument on Monday in a chat. Uh, who? Who are you talking about, Ivy Push? Just, we're not talking about the person, okay? I'm going to put you on timeout so that we can uh, remove anything that you're related to anything. It was the 11th, though. Right. Do you think they found any of Richard Allen's DNA or fingerprints? I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting if the uh, the uh, I bet you I'm not getting notifications aren't going out because I criticize Biden. I bet you a hundred bucks. That's what it is. When I say he's terrible, oh god, we gotta put him in. We gotta don't notify everybody. He might be telling people that didn't know. Yeah, uh, maybe, you know, how. remember how we knew that there was only like six of the, or markers from the CODIS? You know, what if those match? That'd be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So anyways, what you guys should do is, uh, unsubs you know, like unsubscribe and then subscribe again and hit the notification bell for all videos. Maybe that would work. Uh-huh. But there's just a lot of weirdness in this case. One of those just it's 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 actually a case that was had so much like, oh wow, it's so awesome they finally caught the per it's just turned into a shit show. <laughs> I mean literally like uh, just a joke. And the defense is who did that. You know, putting out there was nothing put out there. It was a normal case, right? It was a case where, you know, uh, they found somebody, they were just gonna, you know, the normal discovery shit, and then, then a trial comes up and everything. But instead, the defense said, ooh, 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 let's listen to these idiot YouTubers and come up with these crazy conspiracy theories. Hell, let's even have some of the YouTubers write some of the portions. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Hey, thanks, Georgina Stoliker. There, let me, like, there's no way that lawyers, unless they are the worst attorneys on the planet, wrote large segments of that 136-page document. The second I read it, I said, this is embarrassing. This is something a child would write. You know, almost like somebody going, oh, so you're saying only one single solitary man did this? And it, let me say one solitary person did this? And one single solitary man lifted this branch? And one solitary... Hey, that's a good one. One single solitary... You know, we could do a rap with that one. You know, I'll have it like 15 points, and each one of those will be a... I mean, don't you think that that was just ridiculous? <laughs> yeah, because I sure as hell did. Yeah. So, anyways, it is weird, right? That somebody took their, you know, killed themselves when they were, you know, somebody that was implicated in leaking information. And but here, here's what I want everybody to know. Anybody that was out there helping to determine. Where who the the where the leak came from and um, you know was helping like the law enforcement to figure out the leaks that's absolutely bullshit that they were doing. You don't have to f don't feel any guilt whatsoever, okay? Because there's absolutely nothing that you did wrong. All right, zero. In fact, it's really selfish of what uh, what that person did. Plus. Um, you know, they must, maybe there was something so egregious that they did, that they did that. But if you're out there trying to actually help do the right thing, you don't have to feel bad at all. All right. And don't feel bad. Uh, oh, brother, what? Too broke. What does that mean? Oh, brother. Uh, uh well, it is illegal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't, uh, 
I mean, it's absolutely against the rules or whatever the hell it is that the courts are doing. You, you don't leak documents like that. Well, it's not just plausible, a blank slate. It's like very extremely likely. It's like literally, I would say 99.999% that one person killed and did all, the entire murder. Did, did it all. All right. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if when I say legal, is there like criminal? Uh, I mean, it seems like there's got to be some laws and so forth in the judicial system that you can't be leaking information, especially when there's a gag order. I mean, a gag order, I think, trumps that information, right? Yeah. So anybody out there, like, as I was saying, that any help in law enforcement, don't feel any guilt whatsoever that somebody would do that. Who should feel guilty, however, is the defense team. The defense team, along with, uh, I think, a, uh, a slew of various YouTubers out there, you should feel absolutely horrendous because you were uh, uh, likely complicit in sort of setting up the scenarios where, ooh, let's get this out and all that stuff. And uh, you are responsible for, well, I mean, it's their ultimate choice, but you are uh, people that put the scenario in place where this happened, especially the defense team. Absolutely ridiculous. All right. Yes, everybody, if you're out there, everybody, and you're watching the show, if you could help support the channel, either becoming a channel membership uh, super chats, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We are currently at, uh, let's see what we're at here for the life of the channel, or not the channel, but since January 2020, we've given away $168,600 to various charities, 46000 this year so far, 62 last year, and 42 the year before that, and 22000 the year before that. So we're at currently at 168600 I make an income too, so you're help supporting the channel. But I also give away a tremendous amount of the money. We have a $6,000 uh, a year new scholarship fund that we'll be giving out $3,000 to two different students in honor of any fallen freaks, any freaks that have passed away. And the scholarship will be for... Um, uh, Criminal justice, or let's see, crim, I think it was criminology and um, criminal justice, I think it was. And then the other one is uh, for forensic sciences. You know, either one of those, and they have to write letters, and you have to be in high school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we've also put in, uh, gosh, almost $70,000 into our DNA fund that has, uh, for, we've done 14 identify, or well, we haven't, solved 14 of them but uh, i think like six or so are still in the progress uh, in progress right now so that's been about seventy thousand dollars and the rest has gone to a whole bunch of other charities out there and the only way to make that happen is if on a nightly basis everybody comes together helps support the channel and we can keep moving forward we had a really couple shitty <laughs> nights in a row just out of nowhere for really no reason at all just the topic i guess uh but um, that would be awesome. So thank you, Eugenie, up there. All right, let's see. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, we, this case just needs to get done. I, I, I hope to God this case starts in January, just like it's supposed to. And it just gets over. And... Um, you know, Richard Allen is the killer, okay? That's my opinion. I don't have any sort of uh, doubt or question about it. Like, hmm, what if, uh, you know, he did it, okay? Absolutely, he even admitted doing it. Everyone kind of forgets that. They gloss over the, they keep going through the, well, let's see, maybe it is, ooh, 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 Odinism, Odinism. Instead of going, well, you know what, he, he actually admitted doing it twice uh, to his mom and his wife. Oh, well. 
Uh, sometimes it takes, you know, I, don't know, I would I would say six months sometimes. You know, I mean, some of them are really long. It just kind of depends on the shape of the DNA. Yeah, Blue's doing good. Yeah, he's in the other room. But did my sales pitch there work for any of you guys that out there? Let's see. Um, if they felt it was a viable consideration, wouldn't they save it for their defense rather than spilling it out? I don't know. I think they want... They're trying to um, sort of screw up the minds <coughs> of the jury pool to consider that there's these other elements out there. <coughs> yeah. I'm nervous to even get to one of the cold cases based on where we're at right now. Uh -huh. From what I'm seeing, it will take two years to find a jury. Yeah, you mean with all the leaking and shit? Hey, thank you so much, Music City Mom 2! Who's the first one? Thank you, Play-Doh, not Play-Doh. Hey, it was kind of cool. We got it. We had our first uh, mod uh, team meeting type of thing today. Uh, Paulette was there. Danielle was there. Bama Forever was there. Amber Maiden was there. Zozo was there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Audra, or a <laughs> blank slate, sorry. A blank slate. Uh... Like it was also um, Claudia Neubauer, Stacy, uh, uh. oh yeah, and Cheyenne R. Thanks, Will Lab. My cousin's son had a baby two days ago, and they named her Autumn Gray. All right, that's the sixth person in my family with that middle name. Oh, really? Wow. Crazy. Greek, ocean wave, ocean wave, ocean wave. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have showed up. <laughs> I'll send you the memo next time. I mean, I really, if you're here as a mod a lot, I, I would think of it. I just, you know, um, like Beth and a few other, the older mods, they're hardly ever around. Just when Delphi is being discussed or something. So it's like it doesn't pop into my head as mods. I just think of you as a friend, you know, instead of... And some of the mods are friends and mods. Almost all of them are friends and mods, really. I mean, that's how... Why they're mods. <laughs> I'm the only Gray you've ever met. There it is, Linda Howe. That's right. Yeah, you were there. No, I just don't remember everybody now when I think back because... Uh, Especially if you didn't have your face on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, what do you guys think about what we were talking about? Isn't that just bizarre as hell? That somebody related to the leaking and you know right in the middle of the fray of the leaking they kill themselves right after it's sort of discovered where the leaking came from pretty weird pretty weird yeah i mean it's just such a the, the case itself is absolutely crazy because i was told uh, twice now by people that know that there is no connection to Keegan Klein, which, you know, I guess if you if you if you go back and you say, okay, that whole interrogation they did of Keegan Klein, 
they lied to him in there. They were just fishing to try to find and try to give him some lies to see how he'd respond to them. You, you could claim that, <laughs> except, you know, the other part is, you know, the law enforcement went over to his house on, I believe it was the 23rd, if I remember right, or 20. 5th actually the 25th of February of 2017 and based based on the fact that he communicated with uh, Libby's friend and communicated with Libby like liked one of her comments so they went over there and they found all these phones and electronic devices completely filled with child pornography and CSAM material he didn't produce the phone that he was using during the time of the murders. He hid it. Then law enforcement took him down to the station to do a polygraph test that he he took, and all the questions were about Libby and Abby. Then he uh, goes back home, and as soon as he gets back home, law enforcement's not there anymore. He finds his phone, and he starts uninstalling and deleting apps over and over again to wipe out any way of figuring out what was on that phone prior and um, then they you know law enforcement did a whole bunch of subpoenas and it might have taken a long time and then it came back and it, apparently it turns out that they were communicating like like the Anthony Schaus profile was communicating with Libby and then and then Anth Keegan Klein's Dropbox account that he was also using led to one of the largest child pornography rings in Indiana state history. So when you, is it possible though that Richard Allen was connected to the Dropbox portion but not necessarily Keegan Klein himself? Like maybe the Dropbox was sort of a, a repository, kind of a larger thing that other people were just using, he created it. And maybe people would post stuff like, hey, this girl's coming over here, and he saw that on there. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, to me, it's just astonishing to believe that it's all a coincidence. Hey, Tamster. I'm at a complete loss now with the case. Keegan Klein connection was a given. I know, I know. I feel the same way. You know, it's just, un it's unreal. And I'm actually not going to just completely toss that out. I think there might be a connection um, just sort of, but not directly to Keegan Klein himself, although the Dropbox would be considered a direct link, I would think. Yeah, it's just, it's incredible. <laughs> just absolutely incredible. Now, what if the, the part about that Keegan said he was going to meet her there, there that day, meet uh, Libby that day, that he didn't really say that? You know, that would change, that would just make that not, that portion. But it's just one of like 20 things that are so like, oh man, it has to be. Yeah, yeah, well, I got from two different people who said that they can't find a connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen. How weird is that? Yeah, we, uh, we don't really know what they were searching in the water for, but they were searching in the water for a month, and about a week before they stopped searching in the water, that's when... Uh, Richard Allen's name popped up, and then on October, I would think that was like the 21st of September, and then on October 13th, if I remember right, that's the date that they went over to the house to serve a search warrant. But isn't that amazing? And then they still searched that river for a week after they already came up with Richard Allen's name. Wouldn't you just go, oh shit, okay, yeah, here we go. And then what, okay, is it true about the Marathon gas station? See, see now we got to think about it like this. A lot of the stuff that we um, are hearing about came from the murder sheet, right? And it turns out that if it's not Richard, Al uh, not Keegan Klein or anything like that, then that whole 
line of comments aren't going to be real. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, just really strange. Just trying to read some of these. How come I don't I don't see somebody named Linda in here? Obviously they just keep typing over and over and over again though. I don't see some oh there it is right there. No, she's not a mod. Smooth sailor. That's a stupid comment. Thanks, though. Ah, uh, yes, that's the big question, Gray. I really want to know if KK looked up Marathon in Del... Yeah, so you've got... I mean, the Marathon gas station, right? The timing of the arrest and the search of the Wabash River after all those years. Just a mirac miraculous, right? Now, hold on a second. blue in here. Come here, blue. Come on, buddy. Come here. Here, you guys haven't seen blue in a while. Here we go. Here we go. Hey. Nope. <laughs> there he is. Oh, look. Oh, 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 oh. He's digging. He's digging. Hey, thanks, CR and Dobby Smith, two hundred or two dollars, I guess. Huh? How come it showed up like that? That was weird. Damn, I'm late tonight. Stuck in rewind mode. There he is. Uh, look how cute Blue is, huh? Come on, you guy. Right, Blue? <laughs> yeah, you got a dog named Blue. Just not as cute as this one, though, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Ugh. Right there, boy. Get in your little thing. Right there, right there. Yeah, you guys haven't seen Blue in a while. Yeah. Just let figure. Yeah, you should get one. They're awesome. Bright blue. Uh -huh. Yep, dogs are awesome. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Where are we at? Yeah, he doesn't, he still makes some sound, but he's, I got him, we got some medicine that we have to give him now. And, yeah, they've got good personality. Yeah, he doesn't quite... He still coughs and stuff, but not as much. Blue, over there, come on. Over there. Blue, right there. Right there. Go there. Go there, go get Go get hmm. He's looking for something. Put a camera on Blue and Chloe so we can... Maybe, Sandy. Will you become uh, unsubscribed if I don't, or... <laughs> Man, you guys are... I'm just trying to figure things out. Yeah. Hmm. 
also. Well, anyways, uh, hopefully we can get to the the goal tonight, just so we I feel like we get back on the right uh, path. We're sort of, uh, man, those two days of doing something outside of my genre really just went <laughs> crash right in my face. Yeah, so I think I was just going through all the different things. So, it was, um, so you had that. It's just, it's so weird when you just go think back about the case from the beginning. You all, you go back in time where you're, you know, you just think about it like the first night. You know, I remember watching the videos where they're interviewing Mike and and Anna. Like they're just kind of worried. They're still looking for him at night. And damn, I'm late tonight. Stuck in rewind mode. You know, law enforcement coming forward, talking, you know, saying, hey, we found some bodies. We're scaling back the search, you know. And, you know, I remember listening to scanner audio after the fact of various items found, like a woman's undergarments found in the, in the creek. You know, that, all those kind of things. And then all these different people that look like they might be good suspects over the years. And, and nothing, 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 nothing. Then finally one day there's uh, the Keegan Klein stuff. See, what's, what's weird to me is that the Keegan Klein re revelation seemed to be the beginning of the end of this case where the focus never relented. And then one day, oh, wow, this other person shows up and it's not related. This doesn't uh, jive, but uh, definitely possible, you know. Thanks, Trish Atwell. Yeah, it's, it's been too long of a road, especially since the road should have been a two-second drive to 7-Eleven because they, they had the name the whole time. Hey, thanks, Sandy Shirley. <laughs> Because you love Blue Clover. Okay. Well, it, what, what makes it harder, though, is I'm in a whole different part of the house. I can still put a camera on them over there. But I don't know. My wife likes Chloe, too, and Blue. But, like, you know, Chloe's sort of her favorite. So I don't know how I would get Chloe if I brought him into here, um, if I could get him on camera. But I could try it. Hey, wow, thanks, Eugenie, the gift meister. <laughs> uh, very cool. Sandy Shirley, thank you. Do you guys want me to? Yeah. <clears throat> I heard from one official that this is just like pretty much the most ridiculous case they've ever had to work, they've ever worked on, and that the, you know, uh, you know, I won't even say it. It's just crazy how crazy the whole thing is. Just, I mean, I'll tell you what. If I come back and we've got... Uh, I'll go do it. I'm going to go hook up the camera on Blue and Chloe over there and see if it works. Oh, look at that, Pama Forever! Man, I think that's the first cat eye donation for in like four days, which is... A uh, shocker. Thank you. So you guys want me to go try to hook up the... I, it doesn't take too long. I don't think. <laughs> I could try it. Maybe. Maybe. I just figured that there's the... Uh, yeah, okay. I'll do it. All right. Let me, let me play you your... Here, I'll tell you what, I'll play the ooh la la music. While I go set it up. Okay. 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 <laughs> you know what it's really saying there.
<laughs> oh, God. So they took off right when I left. <laughs> well, they'll come back. They'll come back. <laughs> hey, thanks, Brad Eyed Girl. You love that music, you guys? Beth was telling me how much she liked it earlier. Wished I'd play it again. There they are. Look, they came back. Blue, go over to the left. Look at, look at how if you squint your eyes, you can only see Chloe's eyeballs. She like matches that uh, pillow almost perfectly. Yep. <laughs> There's the fly. Look at Chloe's looking at the fly. Can you see it? So I guess the ground assault's going to be happening coming up here. So what do you guys think is the craziest uh, coincidence if it's not, if there is no connection? What do you think it is? Yeah, I do have a uh, uh, Rocky. He's he's like the cutest dog on the face of the earth. Well, there he is, right there. Here, I'll show you. Here, watch this. Is it, yeah? Come on. I mean, even even. If it was there, let me put it way up here. See, that was my uh, that was Rocky. So that literally probably is the cutest dog on there that's ever lived, right there. But uh, at the same time, <laughs> yeah, he was so weird. Uh, you, you could actually hold him, and he would just stay in one position, like he was a stuffed animal. Yeah, he was so. I mean, that haircut that lady would give him was so perfect too. Like it was, it was the like the lion. That's the. There's that dog Boo that everybody sees out there. Kind of had that same haircut there. The fact Keegan was in contact with Libby the day of their murder. Yeah, so what if that's not true? We know that they contact, were communicating over the weekend. He didn't seem to deny that. But see, even that's weird. Let me ask you guys this. Uh, do you think that Libby was out there that day just totally randomly? Or was she out there to meet somebody? Let me let me do a poll on that one. Don't you don't need to answer it in here. Okay, there we go. That was a Pomeranian, yeah, that last one. Yeah. That's what, that was his name was Rocky. Yeah. See, I don't know if they were there randomly because why didn't they get a ride from their dad? You know, their his uh, Libby's dad or yeah, Libby's dad would do anything. Derek would do anything that Libby wanted. So how come when he left, they didn't say, "Hey, can you give us a ride over to the uh, the bridge?" He didn't. They didn't. But just only 20 minutes later or so, uh, you know, let's just say within 45 minutes, that's when uh, Kelsey was going to take off. And now all of a sudden, hey, I give us a ride. And then called the dad to get a ride home. So don't you think if, they're, if it's so simple to get a ride home, they just would have got a ride there? So it feels like some kind of a communication came in after Derek left and before Kelsey left. Like in that time frame. Or it could have just been, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Why didn't she get a ride from Derek?
Yeah, see if they're gonna meet somebody. That makes sense. And didn't they plan to help her grandmother with, yeah, they were just doing work around the house and then all of a sudden they just, hey, can we go to the bridge? Yeah, I wonder if it was like a Snapchat message somehow. And then again, we're left at that same sentence that I always say is, we have to believe then that Kelsey, I mean not Kelsey, Libby and Abby were dropped off by Kelsey uh, to meet a catfishing account named Anthony Schatz. And the only reason that they didn't get to meet up was because a random killer was there too. Leading to the most unlucky day in the history of mankind. Uh huh. She changed into jeans, yeah. Yeah, well, she changed into jeans, yeah. Not, not her sweatpants that she normally wears. And likely had a sweatshirt on. You know, the Delphi swim team over her. Uh, tie-dye shirt and or she had it tight around her waist or something I, I don't know how that how that was there's no pictures that we have I wonder if uh, Abby used Libby's camera and took some pictures too uh-huh right right exactly that's what I that's what I think Bobby you know, that's why. I, that's why I keep bringing that up. Alan being there, and Richard Allen. You know, I showed you guys the route that he would have gone there. So based on the information, um, he would have driven. Uh, so he lives right here, and he would have left his house. I actually did this whole route on camera. He would have driven down here and then taken a left on North 450, came up here, took it, taken a left on uh, West 300 North, then you go over the Wilson Bridge right here, kind of wind around, nice little neighborhood here, Turn, come up here, take a left right by the cell tower, Passing Ron Logan's house, this is uh, how Richard Allen would have gone. Past the cemetery, and then he passes the camera on the uh, Hoosier Harvest Store, which is actually right here. So this is, um, uh, shit, what's his name again? <laughs> I forgot the guy's name for some reason. But this is where you'd park the car right here, and then drove. This is the Hoosier Harvest Store. He drove by there at 127. And he admits himself that he parked here at 130. And then right after that, he walks this direction, comes onto here, and he passes three girls. There was actually four, but he only remembers seeing three of them. And there were four girls, and only three of them remember seeing him. <laughs> you know, so. Um, or. Maybe one of them was too young for them to get uh, information from. I, I don't know. But anyways, he walks in, comes down this direction, goes all the way down, and when he gets to, uh, takes like 10 minutes or so to walk from here to here, maybe, maybe even like tw 11 or 12 minutes. So if he got there at 34, you get 48, he would be down over here. And then we have the Sioux individual who got here at, uh, she parked their car here at one, I think it was 147 probably. So Richard Allen had just got here right when she's parking and walking out and then comes down and goes this direction. And then just two, three minutes after Sue parked her car here, right there, that's when Libby 
and Abby were dropped off right here at 149 because Kelsey's car was seen driving this direction at 149. So they're about three minutes behind Sue, but they're, you know, quote, lollygagging around, just like uh, my mom would say. Walking down the trail kind of slowly. They're not in an exercise mode like Sue was. So they're walking down, and they're kind of just coming down like this. Maybe they even waited here for a minute, you know, maybe looking for somebody. They're walking this direction, and then Sue sees... So she gets there at 146, so she likely got over here for at 153 or 4 or so. And that means Richard Allen was by himself only for about 6 minutes-ish at the bridge, and then Sue walks by, and then she turns around... And as she's walking this way, passes Abby and Libby, and they're heading towards Richard Allen, who's by himself here. There is no other people. And after that moment, after Sue saw him, not another person saw Richard Allen the rest of the day, even though he said he was there for two hours, until a woman saw him muddy and bloody walking somewhere up here. Yeah, so that means he was down here with the girls, killing them doing what he was doing, you know, doing his little, I mean, the, you know, the crime scene images, like I explained the other night, are, they're pretty, you know, I mean, they're odd, like you would say odd, like how um, Robert Ives said odd, the crime scene was odd, you know, and what's odd about it is just, you've got two people there, and there's uh, sticks, and, you know, the cha the clothes being changed is odd. And then you have these sort of like larger sticks on both of their left side. But for me, that was sort of like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen a lean-to. I, I don't want to, when I say lean-to, it just sounds so dumb. But you're building up one side a little higher. So you put a bigger log uh, along one side of them. Then you can just lay the other ones across where they hit the ground and there's there's the logs the, the other sticks aren't balancing on the body. Now let, let me let me just you know what let me throw out a 3D Studio Max and we'll just make a really crude you know where the hell is it? Over here. No, no. There it is. Hey, and don't scare you away, guys. I know we just got to the goal, but we got to make up for some, like, three nights in a row here. All right? So if you can't afford it and you want to help support the Great Hughes Investigates channel, feel free, free to do so. The Muddy and Bloody Witness. Well, see, uh, the defense says um, that she just said he was muddy. But I wonder if later they asked her, well, you said muddy, but... And then maybe they helped clarify and she said, no, maybe that was mud or blood, you know, or something like that. Ba uh, different than her original statement. Thank you, Georgina Stoliker. Um, no, it didn't look like he was trying to conceal them in the, the shots, but it looks like he might have been trying to do that later. I mean, I guess that's what you're asking. Did it look like he was trying to? I guess if you, if you just stumbled upon it, you wouldn't think that. But if you think through it, what might be going on is that there was a woman named Cheyenne that was at the bridge for quite a while. Uh, like three... Like, she was there, I don't know if it was 3.15 to 3.45 or something, walking around. And the wind was blowing towards the crime scene directly from the bridge. So her voice would be magnetized, you know, um, completely much louder than you would, would have thought. Yeah, I might do a, a 3D model. I might make an exact 3D model... One's, it will be hard, though, because Abby's shot is at, like, a 45-degree angle. So I'll have to kind of interpolate, like, 
how what it would look like if it was if it was straight. So it might be hard to get exact on that one. I was just going to do something here where I, I want to show you what I'm talking about, right? I wonder if I can just uh, import a, a character or something. Man, that thing is almost full. Link CR. And then here. Hmm, I don't remember where I put everything. <laughs> yeah, it might be right here. Let's see. Well, I'm just going to do like use a, a uh, cylinder as the person. Just so I can show you. Well, I don't know if that'll work. A box is probably better. So I'll just pretend that that's a, a person sitting there. I mean, I could even... Let's see if I make that uh, three. What does that do? A three, a four. Oh, there it is. Okay, I can see that. So let's just pretend that that's. I'm just gonna. This is gonna look really crude, but. Um, It just is what it is. It's going to be something really basic here. So I'll just pretend. We'll pl pretend this one is Libby here. Convert it to an editable polygon. And then, what's cool about that, like programs like this, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. Let me get rid of this uh, window here. If you ever seen these programs, you can just click on a face like right there and then you can extrude it so you can go like that right? so just pretend that's a leg and then that's a leg right there and then we'll do uh, maybe something like like that's an arm here and I mean, I'm just gonna just. <laughs> no, this is crazy. But... Yeah. So just pretend that, that that's an arm. That's kind of how her arm is there and then um, let's take this one out extrude that one like I was saying it's just going to be really crude here but yeah so I mean that's kind of how her arms you know Maybe that one's even more over like this. Right, and then enter head. I'll do the two middle ones for that. Yeah, I mean, just just is really crude, but let's just say that that is Libby on the ground there, right? And that's her arm. Or, you know, that arm's way too big and everything. But I mean, if I if I want, I guess I could just 
make it a little smaller looking, kind of like, maybe like that or something. Right. So just, you know, as a visualization right there. Hey, thanks. Persephone's pomegranate. Gray, do you know, in general, not necessarily for this case, if law enforcement is able to access Snapchat messages through the company with a... Yeah, I think they can. All right. So does that work at all for you guys? I know this is just kind of lame, but let me show you kind of how the cylinder, or like a the largest branch that she had was kind of like you know, it's pretty wide. Uh, I think they're not gone forever. I think a warrant can get them. So it's kind of like uh, on this side, there's a bigger one. Hold on a second. Still here, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is kind of like that. This is how this stick is, pretty much like this. It goes right in, but maybe a little bit more at an angle, kind of, yeah, something like that. And I don't know where the top of it is, because that part's cut off. But. So it's kind of like that, but then it's right on her, so you'd be like this, and then I think uh, this part is actually on the ground over here, kind of a... If I went like that and then up again. Yeah. So this is sort of like balancing like that. But you see how that makes a higher side Scope here? Ocean right? wave, ocean wave, ocean wave. And then you have a... Hey, thanks, Amber Maiden, Cheryl, and Kathy Chapin. So I don't know where the end of this is. You know, like there's no way to know. Uh, it's off the screen. Probably a little bit more of an angle too. It's kind of about like this. And then there is another stick. Go, it actually covers up her wound on her neck. So you could just say something like that. Yeah, almost exactly like that. Then we'll keep that there and I'll rotate it again. So then we'll do like a... Mm 
Yeah, like that. And then there's another one over here. Oh, shoot. And to hit the shift key on that makes a copy. Or sort of like that and actually that one hmm yeah so it's kind of you know like I said this is pretty crude here but I'm just giving you a general idea it's more like that Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. I, I told you guys that the other night. Yeah. Appreciate your artistic abilities. Well, thanks. Yeah, so this one's actually almost straight like that. So it's kind of like that. And then there are some other ones here. Hold on a second. Yeah. <clears throat> so this one actually has a uh, has like a piece coming off, kind of like that there. So sort of like that. Um, yeah, I mean the thing is this this does it goes kind of like her body's not totally like that. It's kind of a It's just hard to do it, but this thing actually kind of goes a little bit more like that ish in the picture. And then this is connected. This is actually part of this branch. It just has a little piece that comes out like that. All right? But sort of like that. Yeah, no problem. K me. Alright, then let's just move this one over here. That's don't go, oh look how perfect it does. That's not what it looks like. Okay. I'm just moving it there to use for a second. So you remember how they were saying, oh, there's this V pointing right at their sexual, you know, the organ, you know, whatever they wanted to call it. It doesn't look like that at all. This looks like totally random shit right here, okay? They got that. Then there's even another smaller one that kind of is in here. And these are all part of the same branch, you know, they're not, uh, like even this one here is part of that. And it's that, the, this one's on top of. It's kind of like that, and like that. So does that look like anything to you guys? Ancient runes of some sort? Anything?
<laughs> you see that right there? It looks nothing like how people try it. Uh, see, what I think is this, that the, the higher one over there makes it easy to lay stuff across, kind of like how this one here, uh, yeah, so this this one here kind of has a crook in it. So, you know, if you could, if I could somehow rotate it and have it almost go right over that, that's what I would do, but, um, so it actually, it's weird looking, it's uh, that stick itself. But, you know, you could move it up, it'd be kind of more like, like that's against your neck there, but, you know, like this, and if somehow I could drop down, I guess I could try to do it by converting this to a polygon too, and then grabbing, I mean, this is just really, you know, crudely done here, so just you know, kind of, almost kind of goes like that, the stick. Yeah, I mean, that's what the stick does. And then this part's on the ground over here. So to me it almost kind of looked like you're building this up and then later you're going to lay other sticks right across right here where, see this part's higher, so you're able to do that. So what do you guys think? Does that look like any ancient Nordic uh, specific runes or was somebody using some pretty clever, uh, you know, hey make sure to hit that like button everybody. No, it doesn't, Tigress. Sorry for your confusion. All right, so let's see. What do we got here? Tigress is one of those conspiracy theory people. No matter what it is, it's always there's something to it when she looks at it. Always something. Yeah, yeah there's absolutely nothing there at all. It looks nothing like how they described it. Put those sticks there just to throw law enforcement off. Well, it's true, Tigress. Absolutely true. You're always a little conspiratorial bent. You know, almost every time. You're always willing to... Actually, it does, everybody. It doesn't look anything like how they describe, but it looks like the other ancient rune from the Norse god, Ugluglugluglaglag. Yeah. So that's, that's how... It, that's what it looks like right there. You know what we should try to do? I'll, I'll do one with a character in Poser and do the other one. Or, or you know, the other... Well, it's Abby. I don't want to... I feel weird saying their names for some reason. Yeah, in a hurry, ran into me. He probably heard family arriving, etc. with... Wind direction, yeah, that's what I, that's what I think. <laughs> it just, uh, I mean, it is kind of odd because both of them are in that phase where there's just that kind of a thing where there's sticks, etc. You know, they never got to the point where they were covering, but it could have just been like, well, put one here, here, let's get going. I'll do each one at the same time. We'll get to the same level, and then, oh my God, I get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, let's say there's a ground there. This is actually a little higher. So, I, um, you know, obviously I'm just trying to... So you can see the ground is right... Yeah, that's the one. Right there, right? So if you flip it around, see how that's higher all the way across? So then you can start... You, this one is actually on top of that. It's not conspiratorial, Tigress, about KK. Absolutely using all the information that was given. Even law enforcement thought it was. So for you to sit there and say that, I mean, not KK, Tigress. Well, about KK. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your response was ludicrous. You're conspiratorial about KK? What do you think they were there for? Could have been staged to look like Odinists. 
Look, I'm not conspiratorial about KK. Law enforcement thought it was him for years. And they thought it was connected to them. Not that he was the killer, but connected to him. <laughs> There's no conspiracy whatsoever in that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he said that they, he saw things that could be considered signatures. But were they signatures? We don't know. Yeah. But to sit there and say I'm conspiratorial about KK is ridiculous. <laughs> Jesus. You know. My God. So is law enforcement conspiratorial? Ah, oh, Jesus. Your, your brain doesn't work right, Tigris. Go do something else. Thank you. Well, why didn't they charge him then? <laughs> well, because he was a, a person they were interested in, and maybe they haven't didn't lead to him later. It doesn't make it a conspiracy, though, to think it. Don't you understand, Tigris? I mean, you're sounding kind of odd. Like, you, you think through things before you type it in. Uh, what family member was first there? Brother, no. Oh, God. Here we go. The passive-aggressive Tigris. Okay. We'll put you on timeout. Maybe when you come back, everything will be fine. Uh, let's see. Zozo, uh, so do I one way or another. What do you mean, why was... What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus. Why was the one stick white? What? It's like Gumby failed pudding. Yeah, a little bit like Gumby. Conspiratorial about uh, Keegan Klein. <laughs> oh my God, that's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I actually made a 3D uh, a poser version of Gumby, you guys. It was awesome. I made it like, gosh, I don't know, 20 years ago, and it still works in all the new iterations of Poser. It's crazy. So this is the Poser program where it starts off with a character. Let me see if I can find Gumby now. Just... There he is. Look at that. I made this Gumby right here. <laughs> Is that awesome or what? That Gumby looks exactly like... I don't know what that is right there, though. Oh, that's that's her swimsuit. Never mind. Let me get rid of that. Look at that. And this one actually speaks here. I mean, you could, I could move around its mouth and everything. I think if I click on the head, look at this, watch this. Uh, mouth, oh, hey, I, can, I mean, I actually can have it speak. It's crazy. Like, I literally can speak into a microphone, record shit, and then it talks. There's an F sound, uh, eyes up and down, I can move the eyes around. But you gotta admit, that's pretty, that's a pretty good, uh, and I, also, I have a pokey, too. I made both of them. Yeah, there's Pokey right there. Let's get him in there. And there's Gumby and Pokey. <laughs> you don't think those are awesome? Here, watch this, watch this. I need to work on the, the joint parameter so it's not all clunky like that. But Come on, that's pretty good, right? Ah, look at it twirling up into. I didn't set any constraints on it. So. <laughs> yeah, they're messed up now. They're messed up. I'm just trying to find a character here that has people. Hmm. 
So it's gonna be like a new version of uh, Victoria here. I think, yeah, kind of. And if you went to the uh, clothing, Right here, props. Victoria Elite. No. Nope. are props there. How about Well maybe it is under here. Let's see. I will just put pants on just for the hell of it. Like there we go. And then figure conform to Victoria, there we go. Now there's no skin throwing, showing through. You pretend those are jeans, I guess. And then that Victoria clothing. What's this one look like? That's a skirt. Just sort of froze up on me. I'm still here, still here. Let's get her. Something I did there was too much for it. I just want to grab like a generic character, but I want to pose them, pose them correctly. Right, I gotta use the task manager here and shut down the poser program in task. Wow. I heard it's like a little Wow, that's not even working. That's pretty weird. Oh, that's not working. Let's see. Close window. In process. Did it work? Yeah, for some reason I can't even close it down. It's pretty weird. I think it might be... No, it's still there. Yeah, it's just sort of locked on the screen. See that? It's not letting me shut it down. Oh well. Is there something open that I can't see? Or in process. Yeah, I mean it's weird when control alt delete doesn't work. You guys can see me, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm still sitting here. It's just this one program is frozen up. Oh yeah, because I'm on the right track. It's shutting me down. Man, I've never seen it where you get, you get to the task manager and you tell it to shut something down and it doesn't do that. That's an odd thing. And this is totally frozen. Hmm. 
Not sure, man. Not sure. No. PCs are better than Macs. Let's see. Yep. You see it. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Why it's just sitting there. I'm going to have to reboot it at some point. But I mean, I can even still use these other <laughs> these other programs. Well, I don't know what to uh, tell you on that. I mean, I could reboot and I'd be back on in five minutes, but uh, I wanted to try to make you guys the other image. It's, uh, it's not too different. You know, it has, uh, it's at a different angle though, but again, a bigger stick on, it, it's, you know, pretty similar. It's almost like they did the same kind of thing on both sides but you know the same it doesn't mean it's a rune or anything though that's the thing mm -hmm. you guys want me to try to reboot or what it only takes uh, about two minutes but I mean I guess I'd have to open up every single thing again I have no idea why the wait it looks like it's gone now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I just noticed, all right. We'll try it again. All right, so here we go. I just won't make the same character mistake there. So here we go. All right. Must have just took a long time for it to shut itself down. All right, poser seven. How about poser eight? Allison. Allison. We'll just say use the casual one. Hopefully it works. Don't freeze up again. Ah, there you go. So let's just randomly say this is her. But she's got a a sweatshirt on. Let me see if they've got clothes for these guys. No. So just but uh, she's got a sweatshirt on and you can't see her hands because she's got them curled up inside. You know when you have that little floppy end of your sweatshirt and you guys, you know, you keep your hand in there to keep them warm so you can't see them? Just like that. So, like her arms are sort of like, uh, let's see. And you guys, we're, we we got to keep on moving if you can. If you can help support the channel on the gold tonight, we got to make up for last night. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry that I'm pausing to try to fix something, but you know, it just is what it is. Those are eight. Allison. Uh, gestures. No. Maybe it has it just right here. Hand control. Grasp, there you go. Okay, so kind of like that.
Yeah, so it's kind of sort of like that, but more like twisted here, kind of. Hey, thanks. Cali Sandy R N. There we go. So it's kind of like that. You know, but imagine like the floppiness of a of a uh, sweatshirt right below, you know, like that covers the hand, so you can't really see them. that one figure I think it's like inverse kinematics yeah, don't use the legs. Figure. Yeah, now I can bend the leg here. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, the angle that you look at it going to be kind of like this. But I think this is even less bent than that. It's probably just kind of more like, like that because of the angle. Yeah, so it's sort of like that. And then there it's kind of not like not like that great job great blowing star maybe slightly side to side maybe kind of like this All right, I'm going to bring this into the other program now. I think that's about it. And when somebody just types in good question, it doesn't mean anything to anybody. you got to type in a full sentence. together
Where is it? Don't worry, it's coming. See, this is the kind of stuff that takes forever when you're just doing it. So it's in there for some reason, but it's not. Let me move it to tonight's show. That way I don't have to guess. <coughs> YouTube videos. Working on 13th save. Okay. So I know it's in that folder. You know, but they say that she was still alive, though. So for me, it seems like she could have still been alive and was really cold and just kind of curled her hands up. There's no way he would curl her hands up and put him inside of a, a sweatshirt. She was she was had him exactly how you would, would if you were somebody who was cold, your hands curled up with a sweatshirt, you know. So I think she, I don't think that the, he posed her hands like that. I think she was, they said that she was alive longer and it's possible she was just got really cold and just kind of did that naturally. Yeah. Got to think through things a little bit. So there's kind of like this other uh, stick. Like it does, uh, it's not as quite as big as this one. And it's got all kinds of shapes to it. Like uh, it's a bigger, it's bigger, but it's not quite as big as that one. Oops.
Yes, yeah, so this one doesn't do that. It kind of gets more uh, right along. And it's far away, about like that. Then it goes up higher. And kind of goes right down the leg. But the thing is, the stick actually does some interest. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, let me let me see. convert to a little polygon. Yeah, so the stick itself. I mean, it has height to it. Like I think it. You know, like this is up in the air, and then this part is. You know, there's a segment like over here that. Maybe kind of drops down a little bit. Yeah, I like go into the ground, something like that. Yeah, and then it kind of dips down again, kind of over in this area. Like that, and then yeah, I think over here it actually goes up again, kind of like that. It's not a straight stick at all. Yeah, and then yeah, and it's kind of kind of about like this. And then from above, yeah, I, it's, it's relatively straight if you were looking straight down on it. I'm not going to spend too much time. And then there's another stick kind of like this one. Over here. That's not what it does. See, the thing is, it's at an angle, so you can't. It's it's like this. Let me show you what. The angle of the shot is about like this, okay? So it's not absolutely simple to tell exactly where something is. I mean, this could have been kind of like that. Just sort of like that, but this is actually above, you know. It's And her hands aren't over this, just so you know. You know, it's um, yeah, her arms are all underneath these sticks here. So maybe that was more like that or something. See what I keep, uh, what I'm trying to tell people is I think these larger sticks were for exactly this. See, like uh, they are able to. This end can be on the ground, and then this is sort of like the 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 high point where you can lay it across, and that something was going to be happen later. So like you got this bigger one, and then there's a bigger one over here, 
and then you were just going to lay some more across like that and then you could probably just cover up with leaves but I guess you're still stuck with an open side there so I, I really I, I'm just left kind of you know I don't know absolutely for sure what they were doing they are man-made I mean obviously you do it there's that that clown snay out there he says that I said that they just fell out of a tree and landed there I said I thought that was ludicrous when I heard that stated on a show somewhere okay I think they're man-made I just don't think they're Nordic runes okay I don't think that at all what they were doing with them I don't know I can't tell you for certain because either they weren't finished or they were finished and it's just sort of a weird thing right Yeah, well, you, you wouldn't know if they were intended to cover because he might not have been finished, so, so So you guys just keep saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, but you're not thinking through it. Like, if they were in the process of doing it and then left, then no, right? But if you were putting them there and you were just sort of in the process of laying some stuff down and then you were going to put stuff on there, then yeah, but you guys just keep saying the same shit because you want it to be more interesting. You know, you, it's like... Come on. Jesus. Over and over and over again. This never ends. And then there's like another stick. So this one, uh, let's see. Apparently this one goes, it's not, actually it's not quite like that. This one is more... like that and then then there's another one Yeah, and then I don't really know what the, how this other one, there's another one over here that's laying somewhere. It's hard to tell exactly um, like where it's coming from or anything like that. But there's this other stick that kind of comes in and I have no idea what the, uh, you know, what it's, um, you know, where it's coming from or how it's balanced or anything like that. But apparently these are antlers, you guys. This this look right here are antlers. <laughs> well, crude antlers, sure. I mean, what a ridiculous thing to say in that document. Yeah, they resemble uh, uh, crude antlers. No, they don't resemble antlers at all unless you're a lunatic who wants them to be antlers. Okay, there's nothing about those that look like antlers, right? And I guess I guess this one has an extra little piece that goes off right over here. Does that make make it an antler? Yeah, I don't, you don't seem to get what I'm trying to say about it, Zozo, about how the side is higher, so you can just lay sticks across, and it could be that they just never got to that point. You know, so when you look at it around like this. You know, I, this isn't correct here. It's higher than that. So this whole side's higher, and so is this whole side. So, you know, you put sticks around, then you can lay stuff across it. But, I mean, I guess if you're having one side higher, you could see the body coming. So I don't really know. I, I really can't tell you exactly 100% uh, what they're doing with this stuff, right? Uh, either way, who cares, right? But this is what it looks like, basically, like right here. This is Libby, and this is Abby right here. 
and that's generally what the look is and, but she has a sweatshirt on where her hands are tucked inside the sweatshirt and they um, her fists she's, she's making fists like she's cold so I think um, you know when the defense said she lived for a while maybe she was alive and she was just had the sweatshirt on and was cold later and the person just left her there you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a whole bunch of options that they were um, interrupted in the middle of covering them up. They could have been somebody staging it, just kind of putting sticks around, trying to make it seem like something, even though it doesn't look like anything. Um, or they just, I mean, I don't really have an or. I, I don't know what the other options are. Kind of more like that. I don't think her head's quite. I can't move it anymore. But, or can I? Let's see. Can I do it in here if I grab the. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, anyways, that's about it. That's about, you know, I'm sure I can make one even more accurate. Maybe I'll try to do that later, but I just can't, um, you know, like really quickly make it look exactly, but it's very close to what is in there, okay? So that's it. Yeah, I'm not saying it's, uh, what you're saying is absolutely, but you, you use absolute terms, Zozo, like, she had to have had her arms, definitely had her arms posed that way where it's absolutely not definitely anything, okay? So I think it's possible that he just left them there uh, and put sticks in a specific way for, you know, they're not really a specific way, but just kind of put stuff on there hoping it would throw people off or something. Or there was, he was in the middle of building something and... He got interrupted because right around that time, Cheyenne and three other people, two other people are walking on the bridge and they're likely talking, but the wind would make it sound like they're pretty close. So he probably panicked and got the hell out of there. All right. So that's a devil, definite possibility. He was just sort of working on both of them at the same time, doing each stage the same. You know. Hey, thanks, Jessica Schubach. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So it could be either one. I'm just trying to, I don't like when people use absolutes when we don't know, right? The thing is, it is absolutely sure, certain, unless, there, I mean, there is an unless that her shoe, that Libby, or Abby's shoes were taken off because there's no way to get those skinny jeans that she wore off without removing the shoes. However, if she still has her skinny jeans on herself and and has a second pair of jeans on, which would be Libby's, then she could still have those on and her shoes would have still been on and her shirt would have still been on. That just means that clothes was put on top of her, right? Yeah, except uh, he was 357 muddy and bloody, so wouldn't he have got out of there really quick? Fig. Uh, the stick place was more like on um, each than... Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of similar, like with a bigger stick, but they don't look that similar. I mean, you, you do have the one cross 
Uh, let me let me make sure. Let me see if I can, let me add some shit to it. No, well the one the problem we have is we can't really see. Like this one goes higher. Okay, so let me make let me fix that. Hold on a second. Yeah, so this one's definitely higher there. And this one barely goes any higher. It's like right there. And so this kind of makes more of a square. Uh, the only problem is we don't have an above shot from Abby. So it's, it's, it's sort of weird. I mean, it looks like, um, yeah, there are three sticks together right around in this area, but it seems like they're just sort of balancing on there. Yeah, yeah, we know that he called. He called it 311 and 314. We already know that, but that doesn't, um, her phone was, uh, it went straight to voicemail, so her phone was dead, remember? And he was muddy and bloody at 357. So uh, if it was really the phone ringing, he would have taken off and probably been seen muddy and bloody if anybody saw him at like 325 at the latest. Mm-hmm. I just showed you how thick the sticks were. Why don't you go figure stuff out? I mean, it's interesting though, you got the, the, if the shoes were taken off, he would have had to touch the shoes and the jeans and all those different items, right? So probably wore gloves and they just couldn't find anything. But he didn't seem to have gloves on when he was walking on the bridge. All right, well, that's going to do it for that portion. Right, <laughs> and there's no antlers, right? So here, here's what you got to look at. They're not runes, and, and here's how you know there was no antlers, right? There's no antlers. Now, if, they, if she had two bras on, wouldn't that be interesting then? Because maybe she... I don't remember that part at this point. Um, I guess we could read that again. I mean, maybe, maybe I can save those other cases. But I'll tell you what, you guys. If we get to 400, I'll donate five more memberships. All right? Let's see if we can get up there for their, in the remaining hour. All right, we'll give away five more memberships. It's pretty obvious then if the antlers took look like that, and then it's just a pile of sticks. Yeah, the anybody who's seen the images knows that those aren't. They look nothing like antlers. Okay, nothing, zero. All right. State response. Is that? No, that's not the one. I'm trying to find it. And the reason I'm setting that goal is to try to make up for uh, two nights in a row.
What was the name of that document? Is it this one? Motion to 627? I think it's that one. Jesus. I guess uh, we're not looking to get uh, new memberships. Just the one that was 100 and... No, it's only eight. Yeah, there it is. Memorandum in support of. Thanks, Chaz. Wow. All right, let's just let's just read through the crime scene part again. All right, so when members of a search party found the girls in the late morning of February 14, 2017, Abby and Libby had been missing for approximately 22 hours. Let me turn this down a little bit. Uh, the scene was ghoulish. I mean. Isn't that like a hint that whoever writing this is ridiculous? The scene was ghoulish. I mean, who uses that in a professional, uh, like, writing? It's just sort of, it's just childish, you know? Weird. The scene was ghoulish. Libby was found at the base of a tree with four tree branches of varying sizes intentionally placed in a very specific and arranged pattern on her naked body. Yeah, I mean, but we don't know if they were placed in a very specific, like, arranged. They, they are placed there. But, see, there's a difference when you specifically lay them out in a certain diagram, okay? Or that you're just placing them there for whatever reason that you're placing them for, but they're intentionally placed there. It doesn't mean they're specifically you know. uh, let's see. Libby was positioned flat on her back with her left arm stretched above her head, just how I had it there. Above her head, touching the base of the large tree. Libby's right hand was covered. Here, let me see something. Yeah. I don't know if it actually, it's, her face is right next to it, but it's not like touching it. You know. Blood spot and blood drippings were seen all, it says, okay, so her head touching the base of the large tree, Libby's right hand was covered in blood. Yeah, I would say more like the, her inside of her fingers. I think she, when she, her neck was cut, she probably reached up and grabbed it or something. Libby's left hand was covered in blood. Blood spots and blood drippings were seen all over Libby's body from the head to toe. All right, so she was likely nude before she was killed, and her clothes were clean. All right? Does that make sense? Libby's right arm was placed along the side of her body. The reason it doesn't make sense to everybody is because you read the defense thing. If it wasn't the defense thing, you'd say, wow, look at this crazy serial killer again. But instead, everybody wants to make sense of it. Uh, this branch was so long, uh, Libby's right arm was placed along the side of her body. Well, you don't know if it was placed. See, here, here's what I'm saying. Like, see how they word that? Libby's arm was placed along the side of her body. How do we know that? How do we know that she wasn't moved into that position and that's how she laid? One large tree branch had been placed on her left shoulder. This branch was so long that it extended above Libby's head several feet and below her left, her, her legs for several feet as well. Yeah, so let's see, hold on. I guess we could, uh, 
if we were to believe what they're saying. No, but it doesn't make any sense, Zozo. doesn't make any sense again. You're not thinking through it again. So the thing is, is when you're, you're, she was nude and alive and they were doing something to her. And then it just doesn't. I just explained it to you. I think it was placed because he undressed her. So what? He undressed her while she, she was dressed before she was killed. That's why there's blood on her. So her clothes is clean. So after she died, he, she was moved. And we don't know if he moved her arm. It just could have fallen in that position. All right. Don't, do you understand that? Or see, the blood was on her was on her body, her nude body. So that means she was killed after her clothes were removed. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? Or hello? <whistles> Anybody out there? Uh, it doesn't fall up. It's right next to her side. They're talking about. Her, um, let's see, and the one above her head, the left arm, she could have been dragged up into that position. That's how you would move her, grab one arm and move her, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. It just seems everybody looks for some nefarious, like some other thing. Uh, Libby's left hand was covered in blood. I don't think they have this right. Hold on a second. Okay, so her left hand, maybe that's one that we can't see, was covered in blood. Blood spots and blood drippings were seen all over her body. Libby's right arm was placed along the side of her... See, they're talking about her right arm, Zozo. Her right arm. That's the one that's right next to her side. How can we say that that was placed there? It would be a better argument to say the one, her left arm that's reaching up and way up like that was placed there but i think it was just she was just dragged there and she ended up being right where she was so that means her left arm hand that we can't see in the photograph that was released uh was covered with blood the right hand which is down by her side yeah the word placed means that they intentionally place the arm next to her body. See, like uh, in this one right here, they're saying that this arm right here was placed there. And then this arm, which actually kind of goes up at a steeper angle, was, you know, that, that hand had blood on it because that's her left hand. This is her right hand. Does that make sense, Zozo? I just want to make sure everybody's you know, following along here. But we can try to be on the same page every once in a while. Now, you can't see any drag marks, so it, it, it's, you know, we don't, it, we don't have enough uh, of images to be able to tell. There could be dragging from the left or right. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Whew. Okay. Anyways, all right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Blood spots and blood drippings were... and But Libby, but Abby wasn't placed like that. Her arms, her hands weren't intentionally curled up and gripping each other, her hands, and inside of a sweatshirt. I guarantee you they weren't placed like that. If they are, hoodie on the way. If somehow we get to find that answer out. But, but her leg is just barely under the other leg, and it's way down low. It's not the way... The way they have it is a lie. It's Her leg is... Her foot is just under the leg. Um, like... And she, remember how they said that she was alive for a, lo a while? So how do you know she wasn't just barely alive and just kind of struggling or something? But her hands are curled up inside the sweatshirt sleeves. You know how women do that when they're cold? And they pull their hands inside and sort of grab onto the extra material of the end of the hoodie? Remember that part? Yeah. 
So when you look at it, her legs just about just like this. I mean, why does that have to be posed for her leg to be like that? In her hands, this looks posed, but she's on her back, and she's really just kind of like it's like like this, you know, like kind of like like this or something. You know, and her hands are curled up in a ball with the end of the, you know, it's not like it's has to be posed. And then just because that's posed, why does it mean her this that uh, Libby's right arm was placed in that position? Why does it mean that? I mean, if you guys saw it, you'd think, oh, it's just naturally next to her side. It isn't some weird. Now this arm goes up like this, and maybe that's how she was rotated or turned into the position. You know, maybe she was kind of like rolled into the spot and then twisted or something. I mean, there's just a thousand options that you could pick from instead of something more dramatic. You know? All right, anyways. Um, Libby's right arm was placed along the side of her body. That's bullshit. One large tree branch had been placed on her left shoulder, so that would be this one here. And so I guess we could make this one longer because they're saying it's, About, probably about like that. Then, you know, they're saying a few feet in each direction, so maybe kind of like that, something like that. And I'm sure at one end it got smaller. It wasn't like this log that was 20 feet long. I'm sure it got narrower at this end or something. <laughs> Be cool if we just sometimes just get on the same page, you know. And I'm saying I'm not saying stuff isn't possible, but there's nothing indicating her his, her arm was placed in that position. When you look at the image, it's just resting by her side, no indication that somebody placed it that way. Looks like her clothes was, were taken off before she was killed. That's why there's blood spots on her body. Is it, is it, po anything's possible, right? Her arm could have been stretched out over her head, you know? Every, everything's possible. Like, you could be laying flat on the ground, and maybe that's not how you got there, but somebody posed you, but there's no way of knowing if you were posed or not. See, this, this branch was so long that it extended above Libby's head several feet and below her legs for several feet. Yeah, so it probably had the thinner part was down here. Two smaller branches formed a V where her legs joined her body near her uh, genitalia. So like right there, I mean, that there was, those were there, yeah. With both sides of the V extending upwards towards Libby's head with one branch extending to the left of Libby's head and the other to the right of Libby's head. The last of the four branches extended across Libby's body on a line from her shoulder to her left shoulder. Yeah, I mean, that's what this one would be here. Like that. The last of the four branches is sent across Libby's body on a line from her shoulder to her left shoulder. This fourth tree branch also connected with the other three branches and was placed under both branches that form the V. Okay, yeah, because see, this is one branch. This one and these little things that come off right there. So, you know, I guess maybe what we were looking at is this is under that. No, so it's underneath there. You know, so these are this one here and this one are above this one. Right? <laughs> oh. Maybe we should, oh I never even did this poll. So twenty seven percent said that uh Libby was on the bridge randomly.
I mean, it's kind of weird when you look at them both together, like in the same stage of building or whatever they were doing. Towards Libby's head, and one branch extended to the left of Libby's head and the other to the right of Libby's head. The last of the four branches extended across Libby's body on a line from right shoulder to her left shoulder. The fourth tree branch also connected with the other tree branches and was placed under both branches that formed the V. Libby's, look at Libby's sliced neck. Who the hell types like that in these? You know, it was partially covered by this fourth branch. There appeared to be no blood. Um, let's see. It's partially covered by this fourth branch, right? These, uh, there appeared to be no blood sprayed or dripped onto the leaves or the tree near Libby's head. So the tree that has the F on it, I think, was moved. That's where they were moved from. It appeared likely that Libby had been killed at a nearby tree and then dragged to her final resting place. See, nearby tree, right? where she was then positioned before having the tree limbs placed on her in a very specific pattern. Okay, but she was put there, but do you know that they sat there and took time to move an arm and, uh, you know, do these kind of things? Or was she just put in that position and then they started putting the, the branches on there? And when you say very specific pattern, I mean, how do we know that? I mean, there is some similarity, the large branches, the two branches that go north south and then one that goes across I mean obviously if you look at this you know uh, that's pretty similar in some ways you know it's not like they went out of their way to make it exactly like if these are runes wouldn't you go out of your way to like try to be like okay let me make it like that let me squeeze that one in and you know you, you didn't though you know so to me it just looks like they were going to do something similar, but this one's way more of an angle than this one. This one goes along her leg, and this one, you know, turns way out. Right, Zozo? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only thing that's similar is you got this one and this one, or like this one and this one. Then you got one that goes underneath the chin over here. And then, <laughs> oh, God, am I in trouble again, Zozo? <laughs> yeah, the only person who didn't show their face on the mod meeting. Ugh, boy. I'm going to do this face right here. Where's the one I want to do? Hold on. Let me get my face out here. Yeah, this is my favorite one. Where is that? Right there. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Cheryl said I was so mean. Do I dare throw myself in jail? Is there any chance of getting to the free, the membership giveaway? We shall see. But we're right in the middle of reading the description. Yeah, like three years ago or something. <laughs> I mean, come on, Zozo. Jeez. But now I'm in prison. Yes! Will the freaks bail Gray out? Zozo will be first on the list. She's going to get me the hell out of here. I just know it. Doom, 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 doom. And see, these sticks are on top of her arms. They're down lower. I couldn't make it that way. The Rune of Oogla Boogla. Yeah, I guess so. All right, I'm going to take a nap. You guys let me know when I get out of here. Yeah, it's kind of there. It's it's a little hectic because it's hard to talk. You know, everybody's talking at the same time. Buy a joint. Enjoy the mood. Altered mind escape. <laughs> well, okay, I did that, but I'm still languishing. We got to get to the rest of the the story. 
Uh, the dogs. Let's see. My, it's hard to do it. How do I get the dogs in here? I'm in jail. I don't know. I don't know. I think this would be one of those times where I'm in here for a long time. I guess I can try to do it. There you go. There's Chloe. Blue's sort of off to the side there. Maybe I can expand that. No, I think that's that's it. Man, you guys are like punishing me tonight. I'm just gonna be sitting in here. Well, let's see. We'll get another three minutes, and we'll just call it a night. You know, I get thrown in prison. We get thrown in prison. Man, I've never seen the chat so slow in my life. It's just like nobody is. He, or is anybody here? No, I'm not coming on. I'm not coming on later. We see how that goes. <laughs> Thanks, a blank slate. Man, have you ever seen it so? This is what I'm talking about. See how it's so different in the last week or something? When I, even when I'm thrown in prison, it's just like these. You know. Uh, okay. You know. Maybe Gray will. I want to get a snack. Awesome. So we're just still sitting in there. We got enough to get the guard to look the other the, uh, other way with a hamburger. And I got the dog pictures up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. How, how, what a shame. <laughs> All right, Kathy Chapin, I got a key to get out the door. We're heading out. We're heading out. Is he going to make it out the door? What number are we at? Yeah, if we get to three, how about we'll make it, uh, if we get to 375, we'll do, I'll give away the five memberships. Well, Blue's in the other part. Of the, he's like in a whole different part of the house. And Chloe's over there. Chloe! <laughs> Can she even hear me through the wall? No. No. It's not working. The longest jail stint in history for Gray Hughes Investigates. What's the difference? And Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there it is, there it is. Sandy Shirley for Blue and Chloe to have treats. I have to go in and give them treats? <laughs> you will p play up gray, so I have to use your birthday money. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. That was nice of you. Let me, uh, I'll go get the dog treats.
you will play up grey, so I have to use your birthday money. There we go. <laughs> All right. I had to actually, you know, it's funny that, you know, the shot that you were looking at a few minutes ago, that was actually um, just a freeze frame. <laughs> I didn't realize the camera had turned off or something, so I turned it back on again. All right. So we got uh, 12 more bucks. We give away five memberships. It's different. It's actually two dollars more over here than up on the stream there. All right, let's get back to this one. Uh, let's see. The last of the okay, Libby's arm. We already went through Libby, right? So it says then. Uh, so Libby was killed by a near uh, killed by a nearby tree. And then dragged to her final resting place where she was then positioned before having the tree limbs placed on. We, we don't know that. You know, we don't know that at all. Her arm reaching up, it could just be that's how she was you moved and turned. The murders, the murderers treated Abby very differently. <laughs> Abby was found just a few feet away. That's true. Her body was not placed parallel to Libby, but rather at an angle, that's true, with Abby's legs just a few feet from Libby's legs. That's right, their upper bodies were further apart than their legs. In the shot of Abby that's out there, you can see Libby's feet in it. However, both of their heads were found a few feet, uh, were, uh, what a stupid wording that is, by the way. However, both of their heads were found See, like, a child wrote these things. I mean, who would even think like that? You wouldn't say that. You would just say that their, uh, their heads were further apart. You know, not like their heads were found as if they were separated from their bodies. A few feet farther apart from each other. Significant differences existed between how Libby's body was found and how Abby's body was found. Abby was not found at the base of a tree. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, above, uh, Abby was fully clothed. In fact, 
Abby was dressed in Libby's sweatshirt and jeans. I wonder if I think they would know these these guys writing this would have known that the jeans were on top of the other jeans. They would have said that. I think their her jeans were off. Her actual jeans, you know. Here. Let me go back over to the the main screen. That way you can at least see the dogs while I'm reading this shit over here. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how close her color is to that pillow though? You, you just can't see her half the time. So Abby was found at the base of a tree. Abby was fully clothed. In fact, Abby was dressed in Libby's sweatshirt and jeans. No blood appeared on Abby's clothing, meaning that she was uh, likely murdered while naked and then dressed by the... That doesn't mean that at all. See, th this is what I'm saying. Is, see, the clothing that she was wearing was Libby's clothing. Libby's clothing was taken off before she was killed. So that means Libby's clothing was clean. You see? And then a Abby's uh, other clothing, like her jacket... Uh, we don't know where that is. Probably in the water. So anyways, it says, No blood appeared on Abby's clothing, meaning that she was likely murdered while naked and then dressed by the murderers, with S at the end, after she expired and after the blood had stopped spilling from her neck. Libby's sweatshirt and jeans. No blood appeared on Abby's clothing. See, what they should be saying is Libby's clothing. Meaning that she was likely murdered while naked and then dressed. See, but underneath the sweatshirt is Abby's normal, that, that maroon-looking shirt that she has in on the bridge photograph. See what I'm saying? So that means, was that shirt ever taken off? We don't know. So we don't know if she was ever naked. Or fully naked, because she has the maroon shirt on. If she was missing that maroon shirt, you could you could speculate that she was almost fully nude because she's wearing Libby's sweatshirt, and the pants would have had to be taken off to remove the shoe. You have to remove the shoes to remove her regular pants, etc. Anyways, uh, meaning that she was likely murdered while naked doesn't likely mean anything. Abby's hands were clean. No blood. Abby's feet, and see, look at that's what I mean. Like, Abby's hands are inside. I think she was probably still alive and cold, and that's when she was killed. And she probably likely passed out, but her hands and everything were in the same position. Abby's feet were clean, no blood, other than blood found around Abby's neck area where the murders, where the murders had inflicted the fatal wound. You notice how they keep saying murderers because it, they have to make it match their theory. It's ridiculous. Inflicted a fatal wound. Very little, if any, blood was found anywhere else on Abby's body or clothing. See, but you're saying Abby's clothing when in fact the clothing she has on is mainly Libby's clothing that is out exposed to the elements. You have the sweatshirt, and you have Libby's jeans, and those are what are exposed to the elements. Those don't have blood on them. So what does that tell you? What does it tell you that Libby's clothes, clothing that's on Abby has no blood on it? What does it tell you guys? I'm just asking the question. What do you guys think? What does it tell you that Libby's clothing that was on Abby had no blood on it? Right. That's what it tells you. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. It tells you that she was naked and her clothes were off when she was killed and her clothes were clean off to the side. No, that doesn't mean that. Missy 6. It says the exact opposite.
No, I don't think uh, Abby was even moved much from where she was. She could have been, though. Uh, meaning she was likely murdered while naked and... Okay, so it does say that next. <laughs> no blood appeared on Abby's clothing, meaning... But see, that's actually Libby's clothing. See, they're, they're screwing this up, right? So it says, no blood appeared on, on Abby's clothing, meaning that she was likely murdered while naked. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. It means that it's likely Libby was naked. You guys get what I'm saying? So these guys can't even think their way out of a shoebox. Uh, likely murdered while naked and then dressed by the murders after she expired and after the blood had stopped spilling from her neck. And now, I don't agree with that at all. So what they're saying is with the, the neck wound um, that she would have got blood all over Libby's clean clothing. So I guess in some ways that that's what they're speculating on. But it doesn't always mean that. I think Abby was likely turned over or something at some point, but remember how they said she was still alive? So maybe her hands were doing what they're doing. After the blood had stopped, spilled from her neck, Abby's hands were clean, no blood. Abby's feet were clean, no blood, other than blood found around Abby's neck area where the murders had inflicted the fatal wound. Very little, if any, blood was found anywhere else on Abby's body or clothing. The juxtaposition of the spots and uh, streaks of blood found all over, all over Libby's body with the lack of blood on Abby's body, uh, undergarments. You know what's weird? The picture of Libby, though, you don't really see any of that stuff on there. Uh, over Libby's body with the lack of blood on Abby's body, undergarments over garments is stark. Let's see. Blood was found, let me read that sentence again. No blood, other than blood found around Abby's neck area where the murderers had inflicted the fatal wound. Very little, if any blood was found anywhere else. See, it could mean that she was dressed after she died. It could mean that. Um, but if they're only looking at the picture... I don't know if the, you could tell if there was drops of blood around or not. Because I think it's a dark, uh, let, me, let me just, it's like a dark sweatshirt. Yeah, it's almost black. Well, it is a black sweatshirt. It's a black sweatshirt Delphi swim team. So, is there blood around the neck of that thing and they can't see it? Or are they reading the report? You know, I don't know where they're getting their information from. You know, it's definitely um, it's sort of a <laughs> it's sort of interesting. But the thing that you just got to think to yourself when they claim that there's no way one person could do this, that's just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, one of the most ludicrous claims that anybody could make. It, in an hour and let's see, it was three. 13 when the video they're likely across the creek 330 at the latest and then at 350 uh, I mean at, at um, two th let's see it been 150 it would have been 230 across the creek so at a 350 he's walking up on the road 357 so that's like an hour and 10 15 minutes at the crime scene there's no way in hell that you can claim that that can't be done by one person Yeah, I try not. I, all, all you really want to do is mess with the um, contrast. When you start doing the other stuff, you're changing uh, elements. Contrast is really about all you really want to do. The other stuff plays tricks on minds. That's, that's a known thing. Uh, was Abby wearing her own jeans? Oh, well, that's what I said earlier, Zozo, but we don't know. I, don't, I think that she probably wasn't, but I was wondering if they were underneath Libby's jeans said that twice tonight um, however I think they would know that in here and they wouldn't have a problem saying that because that's still another sort of weird thing so I think if it was something known they would have mentioned it mm -hmm. new water 
water heater, huh? Let's see. What's it got to do with this? <laughs> you guys were so close to the five memberships. Anyways, Abby's hands were clean, no blood. Abby's feet were clean, no blood. Other than blood found around Abby's neck area where the murderers had inflicted the fatal wound, very little, if any, blood was found anywhere else on Abby's body or clothing. The juxtaposition of the spots and streaks of blood found all over Libby's body with the lack of blood on Abby's body, undergarments, overgarments, is stark. Uh, the, well, the thing is, is like Libby was nude and her wound uh, apparently was worse. So I think that plays a role here. It was different, like a really gaping wound where blood was all over the place, where maybe Abby's was a little bit more controlled and hence she lived longer. Uh, let's see, the juxtaposition of the spots and streets of blood Found all over Libby's body with the lack of blood on Abby's body. Undergarments, overgarments is stark. The murderers appear to have gone to great lengths to keep Abby's body and clothing clean from blood. Eh. They just merely took off Libby's clothing. It was sitting over there. No blood got on it. And the way you killed Abby didn't put a lot of blood on her body. Then you put Libby's clothing on her. So yeah, there wasn't much over there. So it's not really stark, like uh, like they're trying to, you know, like, oh my God, is there something really nefarious and weird? Abby was found on her back, like Libby. However, unlike Libby, Abby's elbows were bent with her right and left arms both placed on her chest. Yeah, that's you claiming that they were placed there. You know, you don't know that. I, I, I actually don't think they were because of her hands being tightened underneath with the, you know, and, and grabbing it almost appears, the end of the sweatshirt that would be floppy. I don't think anybody's needing to do that. They're not posing that stuff. So I think that is not posed. I don't agree with that. I think it makes the story more sensationalistic, of course, to believe that. Like, oh my God, they were every single thing they were posed and yeah. Uh, likely murdered while naked and then dressed by the murderers. Okay, Abby was not found at the base of the tree. Abby was fully clothed. In fact, Abby was dressed in Libby's sweatshirt and jeans. Uh, we, uh, did I just go back up here? Yeah, I think I did. Abby was found on her back like Libby. However, unlike Libby, Abby's elbows were bent with her right and left arms both placed on her chest. Abby's left hand and arm near the left side of her face and her right hand and arm near the right side of her face. Also, Abby's left leg was straight while her right leg was bent at the knee. Yeah, it's bent at the knee, but just barely under the leg. It's almost like when you're, you got your, you're sitting on a chair and your legs are straight out, but you have one leg on top of the other. That's what it's like. It's not like it's bent at the knee like the photograph they try to show you where it's like matching their little Odin picture perfectly. The numbers also placed her bent right leg. The murderers also placed her bent right leg under her left leg. You don't know that. <laughs> Let me say that again. Nobody knows that, but you're saying as if it's a true thing. You don't know that. You know, if you can prove that she was dead in another location and then moved there, even in that scenario, you don't know if they intentionally put one leg under the other. You do not know that. It could just be the way she was when you brought her over there. Normally, though, when you're dragging somebody by their arms or something, both of their legs sort of stay apart, and one isn't on top of the other. Like Libby, those involved in the murder had placed three branches in very specific pattern on top of Abby. The pattern looks very similar to an asterisk consisting of three branches all joined. So they're talking about this spot, like, uh, where was that? Hold on.
Yeah, it's right here. So they, they think this is the asterisk right here. Yeah, one, two, three. These these three things right here. Like that's the asterisk. It just kind of. Tie her face. The, number, the murderers also placed her bent right leg. Like Libby, those involved in the murder had placed three branches in very specific pattern on top of Abby. The pattern looks very similar to an asterisk consisting of three branches all joined. Yeah. So I don't see that. Do you see an asterisk over here on... Hold on, you can't see it. Can you guys see an asterisk over here on Libby? There's no asterisk over here. Doesn't look like one at all. And the asterisk they're talking about is right in here. Uh, let's see. The pattern looks very similar to an asterisk consisting of three branches all joined in the middle. At least one of the tree branches appears to have been cleanly cut by some instrument, like an electric saw. There is, there is that one. That does exist. Rather than split or broken by hand, indicating that it was a preconceived plan. Yeah, it doesn't absolutely mean that either. I mean, the... <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes you go in the woods and there's just people have cut branches down and they're sitting there. Or um, he, he used the knife to cut a branch off a tree to put it there. It doesn't mean it was a preconceived sort of uh, like design going on. I mean, just the leaps there are ridiculous. At least one of the three branches appears to have been cleanly cut by some instrument rather than split or broken by hand, indicating that this was a preconceived plan. Above Abby's head were smaller sticks that had been placed over her hair, crudely mimicking horns or antlers. That, that's a complete fabrication right there. There's nothing, nothing like that at all. That, uh, they're saying that the antlers are these sticks dicks right here like that's an antler and that's one you know um i guess what you could say is like this stick here well i guess it's like the, this one and this one and this stick actually has a secondary little piece that comes off but to sit there and claim that those are antlers is just pure lunacy you know like what made you th what made you think that what made you think that yeah, this is part of the thing. So right here, there's like an extra little piece that goes off. There's nothing in this spot right here that show, th makes you think, oh, wow, those are antlers. Except if there's somebody who wants you to see, uh, you needs there to be antlers to fit in with their Odin theories. Right? At least one of these three branches appears to have been cleanly cut by some instrument. Above Abby's head are smaller sticks that have been placed over her hair. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't see any of that. Maybe they're talking about something else. Because... Oh, God. Is that really? <laughs> yeah. That's complete lunacy. Yes, there's these little tiny branches on the ground, but they're all over the place. I hope they're not really talking about that. That's, that's even worse. There's these little tiny sticks on the ground. And they don't look anything like antlers. And there's, those same sticks are all over in the photograph. They weren't placed there. Uh, the amount of blood that would have perhaps been expected at the crime scene based upon the location of the injuries of both girls was not visible in the crime scene. The defense has provided the court with 12 crime scene and autopsy photographs marked as Exhibit 5 through 16 as confidential. These photographs support the description provided in the previous paragraph. 
In addition to the unusual way the girls were posed, including the stick formation placed on their bodies, another unusual mark marking was found on a nearby tree, a symbol that looked similar to the letter F. Yeah, well, we just showed you the other day that looks more doesn't look like an F at all. Your eye makes you think that, though. Appeared approximately four feet above the base of the tree, the F was red color, and later DNA testing showed that the F had been painted on, see the word painted, right, on the tree using Libby's blood as so-called paint. Additional blood spatter was found at the base of the same tree. All the blood at the base of the tree appears to have been Libby's blood as well. See, I think Abby was killed where she was found. I, I actually think that. I think Libby was the only one that was... Yeah, I don't know, because they do word it that they were moved, but man, Abby seems more like just... Like that's where she was. The defense also provided the court with Exhibit 17, DNA documentation supporting the fact that Libby's blood was the source of the F painted on the tree. Under Abby's left lower back, let's see, let's see, uh, marked as confidential defense is also providing a photo of the F tree from a wider angle. Yeah, that would be an interesting one to see for the court to have a perspective as to where the F tree is located. So the F tree is where Libby was killed at. And there's a photograph apparently that it's not out in the public or anything that shows the positioning under Abby's left lower back. A shoe was found. This shoe is believed to be Libby's shoe under the shoe. A cell phone was found. The cell phone was later determined to be Libby's phone. This information was confirmed by the recent deposition testimony of Liggett, Lesenby, and Holman. According to a recent deposition taken of Sherrod Liggett, the famous video of the person that many people call Bridge Guy was found on the phone, additionally allegedly found between the two girls buried under the leaves and shirt was a single bullet. And by the way, if you look at the crime scene when there's leaves on the ground you could lose a bullet there really easily it should be noted that as of the date of this memo the defense has no photographs of the bullet allegedly found This man, acting alone, would then have to use his dexterity to lift Abby's dead body in order to maneuver the second bra. So what is it saying here? This man, acting alone, would have to use his dexterity to lift Abby's dead body in order to maneuver the first bra onto Abby's dead body. So she had two sets of bras on? Because they didn't mention that above in the... one this man acting alone would then have to use his dexterity why do they keep saying dexterity and shit like to secure the black bra on Abby this man acting alone would then have to locate the second bra that Abby was wearing this man acting alone would then again have to use his dexterity to lift Abby's dead body in order to maneuver the second bra this man acting alone would then uses dexterity to secure a second woman's bra onto Abby. See how they just like make it seem like there's all these points, but your each point is so stupid, like are so simple. Yes. You're saying that one man acting alone has to grab his shoe on his foot. Then one man acting alone would then have to remove the shoe from his foot after using his dexterity dexterity to untie the shoelaces. Then this man alone would then grab the shoe off of his foot. Then this man, acting alone, using his dexterity, would sh set the shoe on the ground. Then repeat on the... That's what it sounds like. It's so stupid. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I mean, imagine if Mr. Rogers had to talk like that at the beginning of his show or at the end when he's putting on those other sets of shoes. Well, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood while I use my dexterity and remove the shoe from my holding in the hand. <laughs> I'm just saying, you got to admit, like, uh, it's so childish, you guys. Let's see. Now, right over here, let's see what it says here. Abby was wearing two bras. The first bra on top of Abby's skin, but under the second bra was a traditional-looking black bra. The second bra was found on the top of the black bra and under a pink shirt, right? The second bra was what the defense would call a gray sports bra. So she had her own two bras on. So what makes you think that she didn't have those on the whole time. That's what I'm saying. I, I, you know, I don't know where they're getting that from. Maybe the there was speculation, or you know, the report says that she was fully nude at one point. But once this man, acting alone, had secured the first bra and the second bra and the pink shirt, and then sweatshirt onto Abby's dead body, then he would have to had locate Libby's jeans, which were found on Abby. Once this man, acting alone, had located Libby's jeans, see what I'm saying? This man, acting alone, would then have to place the opening of Libby's jeans on Abby's feet. See how stupid this is? Instead of just saying he would have had to put the jeans on her, he's going through each step. He would have to have to place the, oh, let's see, then have to place the opening of Libby's jeans at Abby's feet. Yeah, well, that's how you put jeans on, okay? It's, uh, once he placed the opening of Libby's jeans at Abby's feet, this man acting alone would then have to have used his dexterity to lift Abby's feet from her... <laughs> Boy, it's so hard, you guys, to lift feet up and put pants in them. This is so dumb. It, this is what I'm saying. That's why I think this was written by... I think I know who wrote these kind of things. These are YouTubers. And doesn't, you don't even need adrenaline, Strawberry Rain. You don't need adrenaline. This is just childish, ridiculous writing. I feel bad for people who are reading it go, Wow, that makes sense. Whoa, yeah, you're right, man. Imagine reading, I mean, this guy writing a book on how to eat pudding. It would be a novel on just how to take a bite of pudding, for God's sakes. And this man, acting alone, would have to unfasten... <laughs> At first you'd say... And this man, acting alone, would have to go to the refrigerator. And this man, acting alone, would then have to reach his hand into the refrigerator. With his dexterity. Then this man alone would have to look for the pudding container. And this man, once locating the pudding container would then have to grab the container itself. Then this man would have to, with his dexterity, remove the pull-off lid of the pudding. And then after this man, using his dexterity, acting alone, removed this lid, he would then have to find a usable spoon. Then this man using his dexterity, after finding the spoon, would hold the spoon in his right hand. And then this man, using his dexterity, would put the spoon into the pudding. And then this man, using his dexterity, would pull the spoon, <laughs> would twist the spoon to put pudding on the spoon. Then this man, using his dexterity, would pull the spoon out of the container. Then this man, using his dexterity, would put the spoon into his mouth. Then this man, using his dexterity, acting alone, would close his lips on the spoon. Then this man, acting alone, using his dexterity, would pull the spoon out, leaving the pudding inside of his mouth. Then this man, acting alone, using his dexterity, would then swallow the pudding. Can you see how difficult that is? That took 50 freaking steps, you guys, everybody. Woo! We figured it out. Yeah. 
Man, I could I could make see how what I'm saying though. That's <laughs> yeah. And that is exactly how this is written. It is, and there. Look at this. Look at that, man. Ninety-two steps. It's unreal that only one person could do this. Yeah, except you assign 35 of them to putting on pants, okay? Yeah. I might, I might, I should just make a, uh, like a, a spoof video on that. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, Holly on PayPal. All right. So there you go. We reached the the number. So I'm going to give out the five memberships. Where the hell is that? No, it wouldn't be just for members. It would be for everybody. Yeah. I want. I, I like people to see. Because I'll, what I'll do is I'll use examples from this. And then, so, you know what this sounds like, everybody? There's no way in hell I'd make that members only. <laughs> and then this man, acting alone. All right, here we go. That, that's one that everybody should see, don't you think, Plato? All right, there you go. You got the... Uh, look at Seven Beauties, Jessica, Lil Texan, Lisa, Kristen Ann. All right. One man, five foot four inches in stature, handled all these tasks. <laughs> See what I'm saying? The way they wrote that was so childish, and at the end, that was their argument. How could one guy, five foot four, handle all those tasks? Then they go through the whole, from the abduction at the high bridge, to crossing over the cold flowing river, to the subduing of one girl while the other is killed, to the killing of the second girl waiting while Abby died a slow death, then clo then clothing Abby. How do you know she wasn't clothed while she was coming in and out of consciousness or something? How do you know that wasn't the reality? Or how do you know how do we know that the sweatshirt wasn't put on? Um, you know, because here's the thing is Abby still has on her maroon shirt. What would be the reasoning to putting that back on? I think that was already on her. And so the sweatshirt, we don't know when that was put on, but we know it was put on after Libby took it off. And it's also possible that Libby wasn't wearing the sweatshirt, that she was merely wearing her tie-dye shirt and had the sweatshirt tied around her waist like I think she would normally do. So she might not have been wearing the damn thing and it was just sitting there and then she put it on. You get what I'm saying? Alright. Yes, if he was five five, we could all believe it. Good night, Cecil Hotel. Hundred and twenty confirmed hostages. Wow. Uh, update as of this time, the IDF has confirmed that over 120 civilians are being held captive in Gaza by the Hamas terrorist organization. 
I'm just gonna do like the quick uh, like zip through this. Oh, one hour ago. Let's listen to this guy again. All right. You guys want to listen to him? He's he's a pretty good uh... speak, and perhaps ten minutes. Shalom, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan in the reserves here for a daily update. We are one week and perhaps 10 minutes after this horrible war started with the atrocities perpetrated by Hamas, which resulted in more than 1,300 dead Israelis and 3,000 wounded. I won't go over all of the events of the last week. There is simply too much to say, but I will give a daily update of, about the current situation on the ground and where things may develop from here. As usual, we have the map behind us and I would like to focus on the situation in Gaza City and Northern Gaza. Gaza City is where the focus and the hub of Hamas activities are. That is where most of the commanders are. Most of their infrastructure and their ability to continue to operate against the IDF is focused in Gaza City, also the largest center of population. Yesterday, we issued a demand for Palestinian civilians in Gaza, in the northern part of the Gaza uh, Strip, Gaza City uh, and its surroundings, to move north, to move south, and evacuate themselves to this place here, the Gaza River, in order to uh, be safer and in order to not be in an area where we are going to enhance our military operations. We use the words, the words significant military operations. We do this, we advertised our intentions in advance, not because it has any military logic, it doesn't, because we want civilians not to be affected by the war. We didn't put those civilians there, they are not our enemy, we are not trying to kill or injure any civilians. We are fighting against Hamas. That needs to be abundantly clear. We are fighting and targeting Hamas and its military infrastructure, wherever it is. That's where we target it, and we have targeted around the Gaza Strip and in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Uh, we have seen a significant movement of Palestinian civilians towards the south, and that's all over the news. Uh, we have seen uh, people listening to our warning, understanding that they are doing the clever thing, moving out of a dangerous area, and that they are doing the right thing for their family and their own safety. Extremely sad and worrying to see is the fact that Hamas actively undermines and has stopped, tried to stop Palestinian civilians from evacuating that area both via messages and also checkpoints and stops on the ground, according to reports made by international media. That, I think, is the peak of cynicism, the fact that Hamas not only holds civilians as their human shields, not only does Hamas embed itself within the civilian population and, you, and, and tries to um, um, use them as a disguise, not only do they hide their infrastructure underneath, uh, the civilian infrastructure, not all of those things combined, and also when we ask the civilians to uh, evacuate, what a dumb Hamas question. tries to stop it. Jesus. Hopefully, Palestinians will do that as fast as possible, vacate the area for their own security, and return only when we tell them that it is safe to do so. Around the Gaza Strip, as uh, have been for many days are Israeli reserve soldiers in formation that are getting ready for, for the next stage of operations. They are all around the Gaza Strip, in the south, in the center, and in the north, and they are preparing themselves for whatever target they will get, whatever task. As I've said before, our aim is very clear. The end state of this war is that we will dismantle Hamas and its military capabilities and fundamentally change the situation so that Hamas never again has the ability to inflict any damage on Israeli civilians or soldiers. Moving on to the Northern Front, after a few days that were a little bit quieter, I'd like to focus on an event that happened in Look the, at the screen, western Woody. What do you see up there, Woody? of the border in this area here. Hezbollah fighters <laughs> fired an anti-tank missile towards Israeli troops. There was a short 
battle and uh, the situation eventually eventually calmed down afterwards Hezbollah sent drones into Israel and also fired surface to air missiles against an Israeli aircraft all of those two attempts were successfully intercepted by the IDF but the situation on the northern border remains very tense and we are monitoring the activities of Hezbollah very closely with additional enhanced capabilities in the north prepared for any eventuality that may uh, that may happen as we mark a week after this bloody attack against Israel I draw faith and strength from the level of unity in Israel and from the level of cohesion and battle readiness of Israeli soldiers and there's ample evidence of that out on social media and in the regular media and I think that is very very important to see a few issues that have been spoken about in the media that I wish to clarify and emphasize and to make abundantly clear the Palestinian civilians in Gaza are not our enemies we don't assess them as such and we don't target them as such if they were obviously the situation in Gaza would be totally different we are trying to do the right thing we are trying to evacuate civilians in order to minimize the risk for them and uh, it is extremely sad and regrettable that so many media outlets are focusing on our actions instead of putting the responsibility yeah, exactly on the right. entity that Idiots. governs the Gaza Strip and that is Hamas. They, just forget they are the minutes. ones who initiated this war, they are the ones who targeted our civilians, they are the ones who continue to fire rockets at Israel and by the way as uh, Israelis were sitting down or perhaps rising from their Shabbat dinner sirens sounded in Tel Aviv and in central Israel and they have been sounding in southern Israel uh, over uh, the entire day rockets are still being fired at Israel so all of this is Hamas Hamas is doing we are responding to the situation we are trying not to um, strike civilians or their infrastructure and I think that should be recognized and respected in the world and not criticized last thing positive developments and very very important we've had high-level visits by various uh, ministers of foreign affairs on the picture you can see on the picture you can see uh, the uh, top picture Ursula von der Leyen from the European Commission of course Lloyd Austin Secretary of Defense from the US together with our Deputy Chief of Staff General Baram and uh, with the uh, Ministry of Defense and uh, the Federal Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany uh, in addition to them the Foreign Minister the Italian foreign minister also visited the battle sites and uh, here you can see additional pictures of uh, uh, the two uh, uh, the two visits the point being that European and American leaders are sending a clear message that they stand by yeah Israel. I feel bad for them they even have to put out these little images like look see people there are people that uh, I agree with that there should be no doubt at all out there Yes, there's been shitty things going on for years on both sides and everything like that. This is a different type of situation here. They came in, uh, the Hamas came in and attacked innocent people. Now, the way they get out of that is, oh, they're not innocent. They're invaders, you know, whatever the hell you want to call it. But the, the people that they killed didn't do anything. And babies, okay? So there's a, a shift there in terms of, like, if it, like I get, again, like I've said this, if Hamas had attacked the military of Israel, nobody would really care in this situation. It would be like, wow, what a crazy move, and then Israel would fight back, and it, uh, there wouldn't be an uh, like an ethical issue in general if they was just like if they had attacked the military. It's weird. Israel that they understand that this act of atrocity against Israel is not another round of conflict and that they fully support our right to defend ourselves against these monsters. I think that's a very monstrous on my word. That's not what the minister said, but that is the essence of uh, what we're saying here. Uh, and I think that is incredibly very, very important 
that the world remembers. I don't know what you mean. We're one week after the it's atrocity. A crying shame. Remember how it started. We will likely evolve into additional significant combat uh, operations. When we do so, remember how this started. Not by our initiative, not by our choice, and definitely not by the targets that we uh, chose to make. Okay. All of this is Hamas making. Right, and well, that's the truth. So anyways, let's see. Uh, I did get this email. It was a pretty long one, but... You guys want to hear this or it's about and it's by somebody named has the same name as the guy that was just talking it says uh, I've been following your show quite often including Rachel Del Tondo Delphi Molly Tibbetts Lori Vallow cases so I'm quite a freak myself when it comes to true crime as an American Israeli living in Israel I commend you for conveying the truth about Israel in such a clear and straightforward manner every life striving society should condemn these vicious a attacks the recent chain of events are of biblical proportions and will perhaps and and reshape the faith of the Middle East this touches every family in Israel uh, I must let me let me move this or it's so far away from me I'll move it over here. Let's see. I myself have two younger siblings currently serving in the Army, a brother in the Artillery Corps and the Northern Front, and a sister in the Paratrooper Corps in the Southern Front. I've been closely following the escalating conflict in the region, and I would like to give you a few insights. It should be emphasized that the attacks on October 7th took place during a Jewish holiday. According to a soldier who served in a military base adjacent to Gaza and survived the attack, there was only a quarter of the base personnel present at the time of the attack while the rest were on vacation. By the way, from the footage released by Hamas, you can see a drone dropping explosive grenade on what appears to be an antenna on the rooftop of the base so as to cut off any communication and to block them from observing what is happening. He also said that in an update that in part of this number one here is that the uh, leadership also was on vacation. It is also worth noting that on the eve of the attack there were there was a deep divide in Israel in Israeli society over the reform of the judicial system, a reform that aimed at weakening uh, the judiciary. For months leading to the attack, extreme leftists, leftists have normalized the notion that Israel will effectively turn into a dictatorship. <laughs> it sounds so similar to the, us over here. Former high-ranked generals bought into this idea and pondered whether Israeli, Israel, Israelis should even serve in the military or not. Most notably are the special cyber units, pilots and reserves, who threatened to quit their army duties if the reform would pass, the reform about the judiciary. So, so the Israeli army became unprecedentedly are precedently um, and increasingly political during the months leading to the attack, which undoubtedly contributed to the incompetence to such a point where soldiers' reserves were too busy uh, signing petitions against the reform rather than actually doing their job, which is to defend Israel. Also in that regard, I am of the belief that the legal constraints imposed on the IDF throughout the years, either by international law or the Israeli Supreme Court, has made people doubt its real capabilities, if not contributed to a weakened perception of the IDF. See, for example, the practice of a roof knocking as a measure of warning innocent civilians, or the Lair Azari case, an IDF soldier who 
claim to neutralize a terrorist using self-defense and consequently was subject to immense legal prosecution and scrutiny. Another source of distrust in the government and social instability uh, is, of course, the religion. Whether or not Israeli society will become more and more religious and mainly the issue of religious Jewish factions whose representatives are part of the government not having to serve in the army. Isn't this, uh, I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, for years, this is number three, for years in the army as well as the government held the conception that Gaza controlled a territory organized is taller organization, so it says, for years the army as well as the government held the conception that Gaza controlled by a terror organization is tolerable, provided that Hamas is deterred. In addition, for years, the army invested in aviation forces, neglecting the ground forces. Ev evidently, this approach totally collapsed on Saturday morning. Keep in mind that Hezbollah up north has 10,000 highly experienced combat fighters having fought in Syria. So they pose a much greater threat than those who struck on Saturday. Uh, though now we are, are well prepared as they lack the element of surprise. Though now we are well prepared. Yeah, okay. So then number four is, for the first time in Israeli history, Hamas was able to occupy the Gaza periphery, the Jewish villages surrounding Gaza. Hence, unlike previous military operations in Gaza, this is a war and there is an overall consensus among Israelis that any other outcome other than extra, uh, let's see, than extradict, uh, let's see, eradicating, excuse me, it's so small I can barely see it, that any other outcome other than eradicating the terrorists will simply not restore a sustained peace that will allow the people residing along the Gaza border to return to their homes. Hamas has relied over the years on external funding, especially after military operations in order, uh, especially after military operations in order to rebuild Gaza. The thing is that, uh, let's see, the thing is that they used a scheme where they acquired dual purpose materials that can allow them to, to do uh, reconstruction work on the one hand, but also apply those same materials for rocket and missile production. Is that crazy or what? From interrogations of the assailants who fell captive in Israel, it turns out that some of them speak Persian. Wow. So it's reasonable to believe that they originate from Iran, where they also got their training. It is unclear to me whether the Rafah crossing to Egypt is actually open to allow for a human humanitarian corridor if the civilians, uh, or for civilians to simply flee because we are receiving conflicting reports on that. So it will be interesting to keep an eye on that. Seven, uh, there are also conflicting reports on whether or not the Egyptians warned and notified Israeli officials prior to the attack. Clearly, a thorough investigation is necessary and will be carried out after the war ends. Finally, we are dealing with a dynamic and highly volatile situation, and my main concern is the escalation of the front of Judea and Samaria, as well as potential uprising in Israel Arabs within Israel. There are Palestinians whose families did not flee during the 48 war and as a result stayed in Israel. Recall that such an uprising has already occurred only two years ago. It was called Operation Guardian of the Walls. Hope you find this information useful. Feel free to share if you're with your fellow freaks. There you go.
There was an update on one of those portions, though. It said, uh, sorry, I'm mistaken. Uh, number four, it says the Hamas utilized the dual materials also for underground tunnel construction. So there you go. Pretty sweet, huh? Pretty uh, interesting. All right, you guys. Well, that's uh, going to do it for me tonight. Lost the control panel, so you got to go to that. I always stay on for like an hour more than I'm supposed to. <laughs> it's like a total. Let's see. Where is this? Now, go live, ding, ding. Well, I didn't even get to the two pictures of the, on the screen, so I'll have to do that one tomorrow. All right, thanks. Uh, maybe I'll do like a midday show just on those or something, you know. It might only take like an hour. So thanks, Charisma, Claudia Neubauer, Bucolic Buffalo, Bridget Bauman, Kathy Chapin, Tracy Seamer, C.R., Georgina Stoliker, Georgina Stoliker again, Linda gifted a membership, Eugenie, Music City Mom 2, Plato, Wool Lab, C.R., two months, uh, Tamster, C.R., Dobby Smith, Trish Atwell, Sandy Shirley, Eugenie gifted five memberships, Bama forever with the cat eye donation. Uh, just somebody named somebody named Jonathan, but doesn't have the same name. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's the same guy that does the. Uh, but it's an Israeli American, or I think that's what he called himself. Let's see. Uh, an American Israeli living in Israel. So he lives in Israel, this guy. Kind of writes like that spokesperson, though, doesn't he? With the same name, who knows? I'm just kidding. And then Brown Eyed Girl 714, WNC Granny, Georgina Stolico. Georgina Stoliker, I've only said that name a thousand times. CR, Persephone's Pomegranate, Cheryl, Amber Maiden, Kathy Chapin, Mary Rigsby, K. Me, Callie Sandy R. N., Periwinkle, Pepperoni, uh, Jessica Schubach, Chaz Pimental, Georgina Stoliker, Kelly S., A Blank Slate, Kathy Chapin, Sandy Shirley, Bridget Bauman, and then I gifted five memberships. All right. So anyways, you guys, thank you very much for being here. We will see you tomorrow. Um, next week, there's some... Today's... What is today? Today's Friday, right? Yeah, so next week, some big things are apparently are happening regarding the Delphi case. If you missed it earlier, uh, I'll, I'll just repeat the part that there was a... Um, you know, a lot of leaks going on from the defense team, and apparently the leak chain was discovered uh, just like, uh, you know, two or three days ago. And one of the main, you know, main cog or links in the chain committed suicide um, two days ago, like right as it was being discovered. So that is pretty strange. We don't know, you know, of course, like what the full circumstances of that are. But man, that's pretty crazy. All right. So, anyways, thanks, Sandy Shirley, Bridget Bauman, and uh, there you go, Dan. All right. Yeah, I hope you guys found that show interesting. I think you got a pretty good picture of the crime scene. It's really the crime scene. It's sad, but it's not like. You know, I've seen a lot more, like, gruesome crime scenes over the years, okay? Like, uh, if these are the ones that the only ones that get out there, it would be bad, but it wouldn't be as bad as some of the other cases that you, you've seen. 
I just hope these don't get out there as well. All right. So thank you guys very much for being here and uh, appreciate it. Thanks for helping to reach the goal tonight and uh, a little bit more, I guess. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. So thanks again. And in the meantime, everybody be more vigilant currently. All right. I'm just let, I'm just saying because I, there feels like something else might be brewing here somewhere in the United States, maybe. I mean, we've had this feeling before, but, you know, uh, just kind of keep your eye out, look around, you know, notice things, try to, like, be a little bit extra observant. If somebody looks a little dodgy, kind of looks like they're planning something, you know, look, you know, just keep your eyes open, all right? So, anyways, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. And, as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. Quite a while? During this whole time. Yes, quite a I've while. Not seen one person. Just one? That is. No, it says I've not. Never mind. Crime yes. dissector. Like rejecta. On, on a certified human lie detector, detector. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get you. On a stretcher. Even crime tiny like, like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector. Freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a bug on that. Wow, you know what? That was pretty loud, Jerry Lou. I have no agenda. Get my groove, get my groove. straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Back you. All right, you guys. See you later. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Jay.